And good evening, boys and girls, and welcome to November's Craft Rum Club unboxing. We have got an epic show lined up for you tonight. We have got one of the biggest brands in rum in the house, uh, the UK brand ambassador and the global brand ambassador. So we're going to be talking a little bit about Angostura 1919 and uh, a little bit, a bit about Angostura as the brand. So uh, I'll say hello to you guys in a minute. We've got the guys here ready to come on. So I'm just going to quickly do the Craft Rum Club sort of unboxing and stuff. What you got this month? If you're, if you're tuning in for the Spiced Rum, uh, from you Craft Rum Club members. I've done that differently this month. The Craft Rum, uh, the Spiced Rum has already gone out, went out yesterday morning on my other channel. Uh, it's about half an hour video. Uh, we've unboxed it. We've done the cocktail. So if you're looking for the Spiced Rum, the Bothy Spiced Rum, uh, go and check that video out. That's on Steve the Barman Extra, so you just have to go and search that. So uh, this month's Craft Rum Club, the Rum Box. What's in store this month? So Angostura 1919, if you haven't seen that, we'll get the guys to talk about that in a second. That's the rum this month. We've got a pack of lime. We can never have too much lime in the house. We've got some sugar. We've got these little diddy bottles of cocoa bitters. I can't wait to try and crack these open. I've never, I've never successfully opened one of these bottles yet, so we'll give that a go. Uh, and then we got the mixer. Very simple this month, but one of my favourite mixers is... Um, well, it's the, it's the semi-skim stuff, but we'll, we'll forgive Donna. It's the um, spiced orange ginger ale. The full fat stuff is 10 times better, but the semi-skim stuff is awesome. So that is what came in the Craft Rum Club, uh, your rum box this month. Uh, and as always, I haven't got it on screen, but if you want to try the Craft Rum Club, uh, you can get 15% off your first box by using my code. It's STB15. So if you go to craftrumclub.com, Co, I think that's it. It's not .co.uk. Craftrumclub.co. You can get a whacking STB15, STB15. You can get 15% off your very first rum box. So I highly recommend that because these stuff, I mean, the magazine alone, the magazine is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The guys are going to talk about sort of all the stuff that's in it about, um, uh, which page is it? Must be this one, about Angostura, the history and all that sort of stuff. We've got a 300-page PowerPoint that uh, Anna's, uh, <laughs> we have, we've got a little bit of a PowerPoint, but it's, some, it's really quick and easy stuff. But yeah, it's absolutely awesome. So who have we got in the house tonight before we went live? Decky, Lee, Karen, Philip, David, Ross, Ian, where did we go live? I think we went live about there. Hang on. No, Sean, 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 Sean. So who am I missing here? Uh, Neil, Jim, Sean, there we go. Now we can crack on here on screen. So Kevin, smash the like. Pam, Claire, Lee, Andy B, Robin, hello, Robin. Arnand, hello, Arnand. Steve O, Havana Steve. Uh, Philip, this, there we go already. Look, 1919 works well with Tropical Stratford. Awesome. Uh, right. So I think without further ado, we are going to bring on the gang. What I'm gonna, just going to do. Uh, for you guys at home. I'll bring these on. I just want a little sound check uh, from you. So, if Anna, if you say something. Testing. One, two, three. Test. Oh, testing. We've got a little bit of a delay with Anna, but we'll we'll see how far we get. So, Anna, if you just say something again, just say testing. One, two, three. Uh, 1918 is the best. Yes, we like that. And then, Danielle, <laughs> if you can say something. <laughs> testing, testing. Right, cool. Right, if I, if you guys at home, if you just let me know the uh, the audio levels, I can bring me, uh, I can control whatever. So, Kevin, I'm relying on you here because Kevin, you're the one that's normally all over this, or Scott, or anyone else who is listening. Are we on slight crackle? Yeah, that's cool. That's fine. Volumes, all of us, all right. I tell you what, if if you Morgan's breaking up, yeah, that's fine. I, I get that. I just want the volume levels, not the breaking up. I just want the volumes. What I'll do is I'll introduce the guys and then I'll keep an eye on the comments and then I can bump volumes and everything up there. So without further ado, this is Angus Stewart Rum. Uh, the big guy, the smartest man in rum is Danielle. He is the uh, world or the global brand ambassador for <laughs> Angus Stewart. We've got Anna from Scotland. Uh, she's the UK brand ambassador. Uh, and Take it away, guys. Introduce yourselves. What are we in store for tonight? 
let's give some history about Angus. Okay, here's a little factor. I just told Anna before we come on, on screen. Angus in 1919 was my second ever proper run back in wow. 2003 in those <laughs> little square, in those square bottles. Yeah, That's, I that remember. Was I believe it wasn't your first. <laughs> well, I was, I was relying on buying deals like wholesalers and stuff. But yeah, I, I've loved this stuff for flipping ages. Uh, for full disclosure, I'm going to use my bottle tonight, not the other there. So where do we start? Where, where, Where's a good place to start with Angostura? Whoever wants to jump oh, in. You know, and to, uh, I'll see you, man. And it's, it's, Steve, first, it's a pleasure to have you, man. Um, you know, so Angostura is uniquely trained. And, and 1919 in particular is one of the true representatives that really showcases the uniqueness of Trinidadian styles of rums. Yeah. So so it's kind of... Because um, this is... Even though it's an English... Well, is it? I, I would call it an English style of rum. It's an English colony, obviously, uh -huh. Trinidad. So, is it? But it's, no. The column's still... <laughs> now. Oh, there I, we I go. So we can I, dive I, into... I think Anna needs to clarify We this. can dive into the history. <laughs> <laughs> Sky. <laughs> so, no, where, so think, where do we start? Anna, Anna's gonna, Anna's gonna clear it. All right. <laughs> so, so where do we start then? We we start we start with eighteen twenty four, don't we? On the on the bottle. That's when the whole distillery and everything was founded. Uh, there's the rum. I haven't got that actually. So how, how do we how do we get from there to, to where we are now? Go on, take it away, guys. Okay. Um, so originally, uh, uh, Dr. Bitters in the year 1824, that began. But since then, almost 200 king expertise has developed in the market rights day. It's, I think, a great flagship for that. You asked about the sort of cultural I think we always talk about the sort of colonial and there's like this difference between Spanish and British styles this is one of the things I love about Angus Stewart because it's so, so it's not really a British style is it? and I love it, a British managed style of writing but there's also all this, this like sort of from, from the Spanish style, it's much more akin to a smoother an elegant style sort of distillation long fermentation period can actually talk about Trinidad a lot more I can <laughs> go, go on Daniel ta the, the ta take it away Daniel go on <laughs> oh man you know I always tell people man, you want a rum that, that takes you on an adventure Whenever you are drinking, it's already put so much value on as a very sophisticated spirit. You feel like even if you like, you have to dress like this, and you need to know the full range of Macallan even before you get in. And, and then you go into rum, thinking that that's what the pirates drink, or that's what I used and I could afford to drink. And then you enter into a world that is just all adventure. You see. You see Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, you see Indonesia, you see Africa, you see... And this is, is the beauty of rum. Now, I will say this. You said a British, which is one of the categories that Angostura can be classified because we use more rums. But I'll tell you this. Always remember that the islands use the style of rums that they wanted to produce. Every island expression of their heritage through their rums. For Trinidad, the Spaniards came to the island first. They came looking for El Dorado, the mysticals. When they came, they found sugar cane. They were not happy, Steve. They were not happy. But they, and that is why the capital of our country is called Port of Spain. I told the French who were doing really good with rum in Europe and the French from they came and they built one of the first sugar mills on the island called, called House and this was built in the year 1600 
1787. Now, one of the runs is called 1787, celebrating the first sugar mill on the island. Years later, we had over 159 sugar mills. British came guns blazing. So now you tell me, are these, is this a, or a British managed style of rum? Whatever you choose, you, you can decide. But I will tell you, Angostura is a unique style of rum that has been really channeled within the brand style. But there is the finesse of the French and a touch of the Spanish. Wow. So is there... Is there that much sugar cane still grown in Trinidad? Uh, listen to me, man. I'll give you the story of the sugar cane. So the bottle, Steve, you will see a symbol of the butterfly. Uh, symbol of the butterfly. I grew up in the countryside, all right? And during, during the dry itself, we would pick sugar cane. Now, now as kids, you go out to have a PlayStation, no Xbox, and you, you would pick sugar cane. You grab the stalk with your feet and you peel it with your teeth. It's a bit barbaric, but you know, we're boys. <laughs> and you bite into the sweet nectar of the sugar cane. But sometimes you throw away the green stalk and, and you pick another because it's not sweet enough. And I always wondered, did the farmers know which sugar cane to harvest to make sugar that is all i found out that the farmers knew when the sugar cane was perfectly sweet and whenever the butterflies would sit on the sugar cane for them it was, for us at the house of angostura we consider it a mark of perfect that is why we are doing all of our bottles with the symbol of the butterfly now, sugar cane, like, like we once did, there are a few micro, you know, the micro farm more like how it once was. But we continue to celebrate the heritage. The symbol of the butterfly is adorned on the bottle. Now, if you can take up the 1990, the face of the bottle for me, Steve. Look on the base. There's a secret for you. On the bottom of the bottle, there's a on the bottom of the bottle. Now, you don't ever see it when the bottle is standing to ensure that that embossment is done. However, that cost really silver our rums. So one thing I would love for you all to remember is that Angus heritage rums. The rums carry the culture, the story of Trinidad and Tobago, where Angus is from. Wow. I never knew that about the butterflies. That's <laughs> that's amazing. So with that, so is that, I don't know, but like uh, the whole sort of pollination thing, you know, like bees do, bees go around and, and sort of pollinate and, and I forget what the word is now. Well, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. But the butterflies do the same sort of thing. No, no, it's not pollen. Eat the sweet nectar. So if you want to, if let's say, for instance, in your yard, during summertime, some butterflies in your yard, you get sugar syrup. You place sugar syrup on the sponge, and the bees or, or the butterflies would come to take that nectar. And that, that is why butterflies started to come in abundance onto the sugar cane. They knew it, it was harvested. Wow. So, okay. So, question here. So, how do we get from... I haven't... You'll have to forgive me. I've only got the orange because the the Angostura yeah. bitters are, are decanted <laughs> in that. But how do we get from how do we get from Angostura bitters from to bitters to rum? Uh, rum. Bad one, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, what, uh, so what? Yeah. You take you take lead to that one. Okay. Oh, Anna, go on. Uh, okay, I'll talk slowly, just in case. So let me know if you can't hear what I'm saying. I apologize. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, in the bitters that you secret was that, and the base spirit within the bitters is rum, and then Angus Stura joined with bitters on the island, Fernandez, and 
and then and afterwards we started making elf and now we've got the world's most awarded range of rums yep basically base spirit is in the bitters but then they were like this rum is so good the world <laughs> the whole range you've also got the amaro there <laughs> <laughs> you got the whole range, I for- range there, brother. The whole range. I forgot about it. So I'm, I'm missing a few. Divine <laughs> One of the questions I, I, I'm, we often hear people will come and they would say, Hey, hey I know the bitters, but I, I did not know that. And this is where we get to share a conversation about Angus Angostura and it's, it's, it's her- blending and producing rums for over 160 years, man. It's a long, the mastery of our terroir and how to really age and blend our rums. In, in 2012, Steve, Angus to re- released at that time, expensive rum in the world. Legacy oh. by Angus to <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We've got, Anna's done this. So this is, where is it? I, I've seen this. Uh, there, oh, wrong one. Look, right. look at that. It's legacy by Angus. <laughs> 25,000 euros. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, Steve, I'd leave that for you to purchase, brother. Now, I'll give you a <laughs> bit of back- background on legacy. So, we took seven of the distillery. The youngest of each was 17 years of age. Of London, a boutique luxury brand. And there was a platinum of the butterfly to the top. Now this thing, Steve, reminded people that Angus Dura is beyond bitters, that we have an incredible rums. And, and secondly, it also reminded people that rum is not... <laughs> wow. Have you, have you got a bottle in your personal collection? Ah, uh, it's a myth <laughs> to me, man. I have, n- I'll tell you something. The company, I joined the company in 2013. This was the year, right, the year right after. Fortunately, all of the 20 decanters that were sold, I did not get the chance of it. So I do, uh, this is a bit, bit of an SOS out there. If anyone knows Etsy and they're looking for a drink, drinking partner, I'm volunteering. Volunteering my services for free, okay? <laughs> I just, and I'll bring my own glass, like, like, like Hang on. you know, like, <laughs> I'll bring it. So, so you, you, you joined in 2013? Yes. So, right, we know what's coming here, mate. Like, 10 years, next year is your 10 year anniversary. Surely there's yeah, got to be a bottle man, in the know, making big, big next year. celebration, man, big celebration. <laughs> <laughs> so... So talking about Angostura Ramsa, which is it? Was it this range? Because I know this was kind of rebranded. So we've we've got the sort of um, what it was called the Butterfly Range, wasn't it? Years ago. Yeah. So that used to be called the Butterfly Range, but today it's range. And within the Caribbean Rum Range, we have three expressions. That's for you to start. If you really want to learn about rums with cocktails, it's a great way to have a white rum or neutral rum and that rum is not just you know when you think white rums you always think a white cheap style of rum this is a very elegant for three years so it's a three-year-old age rum and one of the things that i absolutely love love about the reserver which is this this particular rum you know you know what Without a doubt, it is a rum. You don't have to give it vodka. You get the flavors of citrus with bananas and some some coconut delicious. I always tell bartenders, when you're making a rum cocktail, you know, it's seldom do people make vodka mojitos or gin mojitos. Good rum, man. Come on, man. <laughs> make your mojitos with a good rum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I love the white my attitude to white rum as well. So, so I was coming into it. It was the rum. It's, from it's weird. Style, it's the, it's white, the one I completely overlooked. 
often drink for, for the the reserva. What do you like with the reserva? Uh, I'm sorry, I know 1919 is a perfect. Got some friends around that are a little less gateway to bring them in. <laughs> that and obviously I'm a heel. Got you, man. Got you. Hello. Range. We have the five-year-old, which is the same same blend, but it stays in the barrel for. And you have what is called a gold rum. So if you pull up the 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 PowerPoint, you will. And then you have two years longer. You have a seven-year-old, and that is the range. Now you go back. It's on this picture here. So you see, see the white, which is the range. The gold that says five on the bottle and seven, which is absolutely a great range to have if you want to make cocktails with your rums. Now, I was standing gold, white, and dark rums. Because when we go in, into the other range, we're on a gold aged rum, and then we have dark aged rums. 19, Steve, is a gold aged rum now the blend in five to 20 years of age so don't be fooled by the gold color of one of the things i love about 1919 you taste it you can taste it, but when you taste 1919 you distinctly know oh i just to enjoy 1919. I heard that you had a, a great kit with some, some citrus. All right. But I always love for people to appreciate the raw explore the range of cocktails. With 1919, you get honey of maple. You get a hint of vanilla and cinnamon. Creme brulee of rum. <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely it's a lovely it's a lovely chocolate note to it as well but definitely that sort of honey yeah. honeycomb i would say reminds me of kind of a little bit like a yeah. crunchy a crunchy bar yeah so for for for, for a lot of british people call the, the taste and what, what i love about it is that it stays on your palate the finish is, is light to medium style of rum but it has the, the ability to really wrap your palate's flavor was there for a long time which showcases the maturity of the spirit so talk, let's let's talk about the distillery for a second because it's a column it's all column still isn't it there's no pot still or anything like that involved it's all columns you know steve sometimes we go straight into the to the still and then we go into the barrels no no it all begins with fermentation do not yeah. ever, ever start. All of the spirits behind you, dear Steve, started with fermentation. It is where the key flavors or the core flavors of any spirit is created. You understand this. And this, this is why at the House of Angostura, we propagate very own yeast. Whenever you look at a back, back bar that's immense like yours, you ask yourself, what? What yeast did they use? But the yeast is a big factor. We cultivate our very own yeast that, and we ensure that it's protected. The strand of our signature style of yeast is placed in a fixed deposit box. And if there is something, if something happens to the distillery, or if there's a wild mutation, we have the original strand where we can go and start all over again. To ensure it's consistent. Wow. So is it one yeast strain for the whole Angostura range? Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me. The, the spirits behind you right now, I can get because of the, the big demand for these spirits. They have, have to purchase what, what is called bulk. So sometimes when you purchase bulk yeast, you don't know if all are in or the same strain. There could be a wild the mutation in the fermentation process very easily but, but for us by 
cultivating our very own yeast. Every day, we have a consistency within the quality. And this is, this is needed because remember, we can't anymore. We import all of our molasses. We get very high quality as a range that, you know, as close as 50% of sugar content. We, we get it from Fiji, Guyana. And when we get this molasses, what allows us to maintain the consistency? Okay. So what, what happened to all that? Because I, I know a lot of uh, Caribbean islands import molasses now, but what happened in uh, Trinidad and Tobago? Where What happened to the sugar cane? Did, uh, let, could we let just not man, keep up? Oil or? and gas, brother. The oil and gas country, right. you know. Yeah. So when you have oil and gas, the money is 10 times much faster. Um, so when we were oil and gas, they they decided to and not tourism. <clears throat> so tourism and agriculture were not at the, and this is why when you come to Trinidad, there are two islands, Trinidad and Tobago. Friends, listen, Trinidad is, was, is known as the little America. It's a very wealthy, come, you see buildings, restaurants, nightlife. You know, it's 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 such, such a beautiful. Don't ever when you think you're gonna come to an island where you see people walking around in Havianas and speedos, man. <laughs> it's a very developed country, and <laughs> so however, you get to taste the cuisine that that is just multifaceted with so many years and the rich flavors of the island with the rum, and uh, you know we have our own genre of carnival in the world. It's such a great country, and a small country with a lot of energy, which is also part of the country. It's a different island, but, but that rhythm. So if ever you come to Trinidad, I would say, hey, at least keep a few days to go, go to one of the largest coral reefs in the world. You get the white sand and the blue beaches and punch and the pina colada, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. <laughs> wow. Nice. What? What is the? What's the kind of national drink then? Is it? Is it the daiquiri? Is it like? How do people drink Angostura in Trinidad? Uh, I'm going to give you two of my favorites, and one, one the national drink of Trinidad is the iconic Queen's Park Swizzle. Steve, uh. this was one of the house cocktails at the famous. Queen's Park Hotel. This hotel, remember, Trinidad is a wealthy country. This hotel in the 1900s, first hotels that had electricity. So many of the royal families, the dignitaries, they would come to this hotel for vacation. And because it was the first hotel electricity, they had fans and freezers to store ice. House cocktail, the Queen's Park Swizzle. And this was a medley of rum, well, dark rum, lime, sugar, and fresh mint, all swizzled ice. Now, the te technique is very ritual. The swizzle stick has this ritual um, that came from the heritage. Yeah, of yes, that's it, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, this God, technique this is, is beautiful. This <laughs> called the Bois Lele tree. And the, the, if you smell the stick, Steve, there's a, there's a light fade, right? Yeah. Now, in the past, you we would use the spice branch to mix food and drink. But the swizzle branch eventually became the... The sassafras or the all spice branch would impart flavors into the drink. But, but that, because this cocktail has six to eight dashes of Angostura aroma. And you put all of that together and you're gonna have a beautiful cocktail. This cocktail became that, that one of the wow. icons of, of the Tiki cocktail culture, Trader Vic himself, creator of the Mai Tai cocktail. He came to the island to try, come because he heard the music was good. He didn't come because he heard the girls so beautiful. He didn't, but the rum was so good. He came to try this famous cocktail. 
the Queen's Now, In his book of trade of food and drink, he declared the Queen's Box Whistles the life form of anesthesia given out today. Now, that is super poor. <laughs> So this I, th I think you carry on. I think one. we need to make one. <laughs> I, th <laughs> I think we need. I think we need to make one. Crushed ice. Oh, you got, I've got some you got the right goodies here. <laughs> <laughs> we got some mint. So what are we going for? We're going for nineteen nineteen or, or seven. It's in the glass for it. So put them into the glass. Steve, a handful. Now, if you if you have more. Hands, that's two handfuls, okay? <laughs> now you, you got big hands, brother. <laughs> we we've got te we've got shocking mint over here, though. Hang on, Man, it looks so good. What, what are we doing? We're doing, yeah, it's all right. It's getting better. It's getting better. Hang on, let's do let's do that and that. Right, about 12, 12 yeah, mint leaves. More. That's good. That's good. You drop it inside there. Cool. I'm gonna add some Magic. lime. Right, add, done. Add thirty. Once you measure it, make sure it's a big lime. Put 25. I love to put 35, 30. Let's 30. Let's do 30. Let's use uh, we got this with the craft rum club, so we'll we'll use some of this just for the crack. Yeah, so with that, right, I would say 25. Yeah, 25 by 25. Yeah, nice. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so you're gonna go with your sweet now. What are we going white or syrup. brown? Or brown is great, brown is. It, but I'll tell you, I love to use the, the simple. It's easy flavor. Uh, and what, fifteen or twenty-five? Equal. Yeah, because you're gonna add a lot of anger to a bit inside here. Cool. Now, okay. the trust you can always put less, but I I normally keep it even for for many palettes. All right. Now, see if we're gonna add the. Rum now that you're gonna use one, you're gonna use the seven year old that I see you do have. I know it's about the 1919 today, but it's a cocktail, it calls for a dark <laughs> rum. And the house of Angostura re resurrected cocktail, and the rum of choice is a dark rum, and that is why we use the seven year old. So a nice 60 ml inside there, a big boy cocktail. <laughs> Uh, ah, uh, beautiful. All right, so Steve, what are you going to call a dry, dry swizzle? All right. So this dry, dry swizzle right there, and get sugar, the mint, and the, the spirit. You want the sugar to dissolve a little bit. Not too easy. Yeah, nice and dry. All right. And now you're going to push all of the mint to the bottom. Yeah, press the mint down to the bottom. Remove this was and fill your glass two thirds with a crush eye. There we go. Uh, now you may have a share with you my favorite version of making it this way. Let's go a little bit more. Now. That's good. And now what we're gonna do, Steve? Now remember when you make it for aesthetics, so we want it to look good. So we we can Instagram it after, right? Or TikTok. <laughs> so you're going to midway into the glass, not all the way down to the bottom. Because we want to keep as much mint. The taste of the cocktail will re release the oils from the mint. But we want to keep the aesthetics of the mint on the bed. So take the swizzle stick and go midway into the glass. All right, right there. Yeah, stay right in. Now, now there are two techniques to swizzle steep. Hold, hold on. You have two techniques. Both hands. It's called tango. Uh, all right. Both hands moving. Or you're the bachelor. <laughs> you decide. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that. I've never done that before. What's that? The bachelor. <laughs> I think like we love the sound, oh, man. Let's hear that sound. Right. Beautiful, man. Right. Um, here we go. Yeah. Nice. Gonna top it up, up with some more crushed ice and build up. You want to build a nice mount. All right. I wish it was. And at this point, point, your big version <laughs> of ice. 
at this point, you want to add six. Well, if you're going to add eight dashes of the Angostura aromatic bitters. Yeah, feel it, man. Feel it. Feel it. <laughs> that's it right there. Oh, that's a lot, man. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. These are these are little little dashes. Yeah. It's, about, it's about three of these to one from the bottle. <laughs> All right. So, so now you're gonna take nice. your sprig of mint and, and don't don't spank it. Hold on. Don't don't slap it. What I want you to do, I want you instead of put, I want you to spank the glass with the mint. Well, like that. Come on, give me some, give me some energy in that man. Spank the glass. What like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never done that before. On the, on the size of the glass, on the side. Yeah. So that way you're gonna get, so the, you're gonna get that nice minty scent coming out. And now we can, we can garnish to the cocktail. <laughs> wow. Boom. Ah, uh, that's tropical, there. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Looks good. Oh, that's good. It looks good, man. I, the summer vibes, just looking at And that's the beauty of this cocktail. It, it really transports you. When you go to a bar, it's really escapism where you get a moment to kind of detach from something that is just so different. Oh, that looks great, man. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. There we go people there we go i'll tell you yeah. what let's and, put and, me on the big screen for two seconds with that sunshine in a glass oops there we go look, look at that there we go boom nice. beautiful there we go let's put him back magic that's that's lovely it's hang on let me put my crushed ice away before it melts so the, the um because <laughs> i in, well, I follow quite a few US bartenders and Caribbean bartenders, and they, oh, my headphones just gone. They um, literally use so much, they drink shots of Angostura bitters. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just not a thing in the UK. <laughs> 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 and, you know, Steve, uh, uh, so the House of Angostura, we, this is a disclaimer, never pr promote the, the usage of Angostura as a portable item though it's an unspoken rule amongst bartenders it's a it's a bartender thing you will not see social media bartender, platforms not as sharing it yeah when you go to a bar and someone like you you will definitely leave the bar having a few it's just it's an industry thing so much so that mm -hmm. the there's a bar called best in that has a neon sign on the outside that says Angostura on draft. We've chilled on the diluted shots of Angostura bitters at four US dollars per shot. Because in <laughs> Chicago, it's legal because of the prohibition period. Now, it's not, not a thing. If you go to New York City, they add a few dashes. You come to London, a few dashes. Go to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, they do what is called the bartender's handshake, not with fingers to across it, yeah, man. <laughs> but one of the things that. That, that we love at the house, of <laughs> we love the creativity of bartenders, the creativity of anyone who loves a good drink from classic Manhattan, you know, to a champagne cocktail that Marilyn Monroe loved, to whatever versions, anything that is citrus, when you add the bitters, it allows this cocktail to be elevated. It balances cocktails. So you really want, want to have that understanding of how to use it. You really want to ensure that your bar at home has not just Angostura bitters, but some of <laughs> So would you, because the, the taste the taste profile is very similar to that. Would you yes. use that in there? Well, could you? A mar of the Angostura what you're holding there is a di different category of spirit it, it's not Mari and a Mari, Mari by nature is, is an Italian digestive the Italian bread they would have a digestive but the spectrum of a Mari 
changes to very sweet. It's called the classification of Amari. Amari the Angus is the medium classification of this category. And it's the only Amari that contains pure aromatic bitters. So there is a percentage of the bitters inside of additional botanicals inside of it. I, fl I flipping love that. I yeah, never. Beautiful, it right? was. It was Anna. Anna gave me the Manhattan at Rumfest <laughs> uh, about a month ago. <laughs> that's why I yeah. bought it. I was just like, that's yeah. amazing. What was the recipe, Anna? Using uh, uh, it was the ultimate uh, uh, things that we have. So uh, I used each uh, the Amaro and cocoa. Uh, uh, Oh. In a oh. which is... Nice, nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm pretty sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he was, was he was he was roll, rolling around rum fest with a glass like that all day. I saw him. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, Steve, listen up, all this I, I always want people to understand that I love, love is rum and cigars, right? And mm. when you talk talk about cigar lovers, are an expensive lifestyle so naturally commercially commercially you would think that is expensive like whiskey or scotch but if you speak to a cigar official something romantic about rum and cigars and i always want to share that because here it is the angostura 1824 and the 1919 mm -hmm. old-fashioned is as a pairing for that <laughs> So the 1824. Anna, just hold it, hold it right up to the, that right way. There. there you go. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So the, the Angus 1824, you get the flavors of dried fruit, chocolate, some coffee, <clears throat> and the finish, Steve. Oh man, listen to me. It stays on your, yeah. it stays there. It says hello, hello. It wow. stays on your palate. From that is where you get to pair chocolates or cigars. If you're not a cigar person that is fine five percent up dark chocolate handmade truffles with rum is the bottle of the 1824 1919 and you get some dark chocolate and you just put it down there chocolate they begin to chew and the milk breaks down and then you take a sip of the rum and um oh man you get this experience <laughs> that is so, so delicious is that is the 1824 the top of the range, or is it the 17... 1787? 1787, yeah. Anna has a whole, whole range there, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that one, the, 17, yes. the 1787 is the top of the range, yeah? Yes. Wow. Yes. But I mean, people think the top of the range is the only one that's good. And I, I always slide. There's a slide on one of the pictures oh. that Anna sent you. Uh, right, yeah. let's go through. Yeah, that one. This one. That, oh, one. Go back. That one. Go yeah, back. yeah, I got it. That yeah. one. Hang on. Now, if when I you look at this picture, might, what if... we let people know, Angostura has the, the largest range of all. And we're not just try, trying to say, hey, we have the best rum in the world. What we're saying to you is that it's so good and so different that they all individually win awards. And you don't taste all. You have to taste all of the the expressions to see which one which one really connects with your style of drinking is it mojitos old fashions or do you like dark chocolate like there's the range is so beautiful and so diverse and that wow so okay so the if the 1824 is the cigar and chocolates what what's the 1787 well that's where you go man the light and to, into medium style cigars. Now, when uh -huh. you get into really aged style of cigars, that's when I love the 1787. <clears throat> 1787 is, is a bit more complex. Out of the palate, you're going to get something that's natural from, from the barrels. What we get from the ex verbal American oak is a warm, dry, dry citrus. And that exists in the 1787. And this is combined with what you with that flavors of green apples and, 
and it has this layering effect. When you taste it, it opens up. So, and that's the beauty of this rum. So if you're someone who finds, okay, the 1824, you're like, give me something more complex. You know, we don't do the funky Jamaican style. You know, when I'm like, yeah, yeah, but you know what's different about Angostura? We produce drinking rum. Bottle down right now. If we were not virtual, well, if we were sitting in the same room, brother, I put out a bottle. Listen, <laughs> we, we finish that bottle easy. <laughs> <laughs> so to our, right to ask a, a sort of technical question then, is is the difference between like 1919 and the 1824 is that just older rums because i'm assuming the distilling and the fermentation is the same for the all the rums so is it just yeah, a different yeah. blend of rums so the story behind 1919 came about from mr fernandez one of the former distillers from the Trinidad Distillers and TDL, when he passed away, the team wanted to sell. Like they knew that 1919 was his favorite. Now 1919, the word, some barrels that survived the fire. The fire took place in the year 1932 and the year 1919. And now, Steve, that's a beautiful story. And I'll tell you, the first home for me was when we were doing a tour of the city for some report and we're going through all the old architectural stories and stuff like that and then we the fire took place and I, and, I, and I looked at it man and I was like wow the fire really took and I started thinking about, about it and something dawned on me as a master distiller the barrels on the inside something about charring the barrels or burning the wood releases congen it does something magical. Imagine if the wood was to hit the heat on the outside. You, I wonder what would that create? Now you can't keep burning. <laughs> and believe me, rum is, is super flammable. <laughs> so knowing that these barrels, I think, I think there was something special about it. They were filled in the year 1919, so 1919, and he kept using it over and over. And this this is why the team went to 1919. It was done by the inspiration of Mr. Fernandez. If you go and the chef says, I've been inspired by a book I read or a trip to Bali, it's the creativity of the menu even more because inspiration gives a boost. And this is what I feel 1919 delivers. It is so unique and it's so special. It is from the House of Angostura. You know. It's 1919. Now, 1824 is different. 1824 is a blend of four rums. And these four rums, <clears throat> and they range between four to 17 years of age. Now, the 1920, but that blend was a blend to resemble the former 1919 field. 1924, which celebrates the flagship of the company, the Angostura Ara aromatic bitters perfected in the year by Dr. Johann Siegert in the year 1824. Like I said, it's a blend of four rums ranging between four to 17 years of age. Come, Steve. Because we're dealing with different blends. We're dealing with different ages here. I always tell people, the true heroes of Angostura, it's not Anna and myself. I'm sorry. The, the video chat, yeah. <laughs> I get to go to the bar shows, but the, the true heroes are the, the distiller because they spend time with the spirit, they understand it. The marketers change on the packaging. You like the 1919 when it was in the square bottle, but, but it's the same package today. And this is where the blenders have to keep that, that momentumship to keep that creative activity going and the consistency of it because there's an expect the Angostura. Every bartender that picks up a bottle of Angostura bitters, they don't, don't question it. They know it's going to deliver what it did yesterday, today, or tomorrow. They don't smell the bottle. They don't. When Salvatore created the, the oldest cocktail in the world, and at that time in the world, at the Playboy Bar in London, 
he used a 19th century signatures. Later that year, a bar called the Winston in, in Melbourne, even more expensive cocktail that cost 9,000 pounds and takes two, and he used a, a dash of Angostura bitters that you and I have in our bar today to see the trust in the integrity of Angostura. Everyone who hears the sound brand delivers quality. And this is why I'm so proud. And Anna can share with you that as we are very proud to sh share the portfolio with you because we know there's a rum that you will enjoy. Dark age rum, whether it's a gold rum, whether it's a white rum, whether it's the Amaro, it is, that is just undisputed. So this is where Angostura continues to deliver. So question for you, because I I've got a very mixed audience. I've got people that absolute where the 1787 and the 1824 be right up, up their street. But I've also got a lot of people that will be on that or and the five year old. For no, someone no. looking to start sipping rum, like just drink rum yeah. neat, would you go the seven year old or the nineteen nineteen? Which one would you first recommend? I know you I'll, I'll let you take lead on that. I think I'd recommend it's a little softer on the palate, like a more sort of molasses -y note. I just love the 1919 to my favour. Uh, so, the, so, so the 1919. <laughs> yeah, move to seven and then maybe go find at the shows that people that love the seven about as well, because there's a lot of similarities is between the entire range the versatility is there people love which is lovely <laughs> let people try all of the different styles different ones that we have to offer anyway did you get that no. oh my crap i will, yeah, I will, can't, I will, can't I will yeah. have to i just have to applaud the team no, steve no. for choosing 1919 um i think 1919 if, if anyone got their gift back with with the 1919, uh, you know, I think you've got a great the conversation that they've they've heard with us today will, will inspire them to the range that they have. Um, the second I would recommend would be the seven uh, cocktails. Also, if you like the cocktails, enjoy the cocktails. Now, now if you really want to go into some just some sipping styles, then I would say venture into the, the others but i think 1919 is a great start uh you can't go wrong with that you drink on the island what? with uh with 1919 is 1919 and now, people love to, to say rum and coconut water as if every rum tastes great with coconut water oh. no Someone from, from the island i will tell you if there's one choice of the rums in our portfolio i would recommend with 1919 it's so simple oh. rum Love coconut. Love coconut water. <laughs> yes. Got some. I've got. I've got the Vita. The Vita Coco. The milky one. I don't know what it, that. it is about it, Steve. It's so simple, but it's so delicious, right? You know, there's hydrating. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's a so because going. Going back, and by the way, guys, if you've got, because I'm going to let these guys go, because I know Danielle's in France, and they're a, you're you're an hour ahead, aren't you? You're, it's nearly ten o'clock where you are. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, guys, so guys at home, if you've got any questions that you want these guys to answer before I let them go, uh, whack them in the comments, and if they can't see them, I'll read them <laughs> out. So get the comments going. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have a healthy glug of this. I've do you know what I love coconut water, but I've never. And I've got quite a few decent coconut water and rum mixes, yeah. but I've never found the perfect rum for coconut water. Really? Oh, Please put some ice in there. <laughs> ice temperature. It needs some ice. Ice in there. Yeah, I've got I've got yeah. ice. Don't 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 you worry. Don't you worry, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> don't panic, sunshine. Don't panic. Is that coconut my little ice milk bucket or there. coconut water? It's coconut water, but it's pressed coconut water. Okay. It's okay. posh stuff. It's, 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 it's the posh, expensive stuff. 
There we go. Press coconut water. That's the milk. That's going to be milk. Well, sort of, but it's, you know. It's milk that. So it's... the one I'm referring to in a water, not the fancy stuff. Stuff you got there, Steve. Oh. You are teaching all there for me, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be less fancy. Yeah, the one you have there goes well with. It's gonna go well with like <laughs> pina coladas, man. But water. That that's the one with the electrolytes that you want. This is water. Look at the ingredient. Don't you start arguing with me. Look. Look, 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 hang on, where are we? Look at that. Look, look, look. look. Can you see that? Look, ninety-seven percent coconut water. Yeah, no, no, I'm not disputing it, but if Don't. it's pressed, it's going to be the meat that they, they, they <laughs> grind. We we used to do those things, man. man listen, man, I, I'm, I'm a coconut, that's right. On the island, because we get fresh coconuts, we know that all of the electrolytes. If ever you get a coconut and there's the white flesh or the meat inside, it's your coconut. It tends to be a bit sweeter in flavor. So... When we drink on a Sunday, we go to the to the coconut vendor and you say, Big man, let me get a young nut day. Let me get let me get a young coconut so that I can rehydrate myself and <laughs> so you have two of those. But but just because we have an abundance of coconut every bar, even though we don't have a cocktail culture that's rich, like in London or New York, do have coconut water in every bar. I mean, it's it's one of them. It's it's a must-have, and oh. and not have coconut water like they you expect it. So why? And Anna can probably answer this as well. Why, with the whole rum trend coming, like in the UK, and I mean, it, and we know it's growing and growing and growing. But why is rum and coconut water not a big deal in the UK? Why is that not sort of made its way over here yet? I should have, <laughs> but maybe it's the lack of tropical. I, 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 can, I can tell you. So <laughs> when you say rum and coconut, there is this, there is this of holding a coconut with rum inside of it. Okay, <laughs> holding a coconut with rum inside of it, that limits the ability to have a because when you have a premium sipping rum, you're saying make sure you have a, a back baccarat or to have your sipping rum but if i tell you pour it inside of a coconut it depreciates you think it does so for us from the island coconut water and rum coconut we have it in our nice old double old-fashioned glasses it's nothing you know with that with a nice flower and a coconut no it's not that if you can break the mold of that type of serve and understand that I can have a small style, a Japanese version or a whiskey version of just rum and coconut ness, I think I think, I think the game is going to change there. <laughs> wow. Interesting. We need to start growing coconuts in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, listen, man, I used to day, today we have, have a lot of good stuff. I mean, look at what you have. Yeah, brother. As a kid, I had greeting for my mom. Greeting, greeting. Like it would take me the whole length of this of this of a few coconuts, and then I have to go squeeze it and get get the milk. That press that you drink that out with my hands because my mom would cook with the coconut milk. Wow. But I mean today we have the, the KitchenAid blenders and the cuisine and that <laughs> stuff. So it's all pretty fancy. <laughs> Wow. Right. Uh, I'm so what I'm going to, for those guys that are watching, what I'm going to do after I've let them go, I'm going to go through some of the cocktails that um, these guys have put together. And Ian Burrell, I think, has done a couple. <laughs> well, that was that was Ian Burrell. So it's basically like um, a daiquiri. I forget what he's called it now. Liming on the beach or something, he's called it. It's, uh, it's yeah. a daiquiri with, with chocolate bitters, which is actually really tasty. I don't think I've ever done a classic daiquiri with chocolate bitters in it. It's quite tasty. One so more I'm going to do that. Cocktail but if you... to you, Steve. Go on. So That's what I was going to ask. So before I wrap things up, one of my favorites of 1919. 1919 is it's it's a premium style of a gold rum, right? When 
it comes to a daiquiri, it's made with just a cheap white rum. One of my favorite cocktails, and I've been serving this cocktail everywhere, is a 1919 daiquiri. Now, this daiquiri Ooh. goes, you have it on the, I think you have it on the slide, right, Anna? Does you have this one? Slide. Oh, you, you, I've, you I've seen this. Slide. Hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen this. Hang on. Uh, All right. So this comes sugar lime, and you have two dashes yeah. of the Angostura. This is it. Yeah. The Angostura aromatic bitters inside of there. Now it's no longer called the 1990. It's called called the Call Me Daiquiri because Steve, it is so good when you take. Just want to. Call me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call you out. Right, we're going in. We're going please, in. So please, 60 it's too late, man. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> Short bedtime. Twenty. So 20, 25 mil of that, and we're going. We're going. We're going. If I, I'll leave that on screen just for a couple of seconds because I know there's yeah. a few people that might make this along, and uh, we got some. Do you want to go? Two dashes. Two healthy dashes of the aromatic. Do, do you want to go? White cane sugar or brown cane sugar? Which would you no, prefer, Daniel? Go, go with the white. Just go keep it simple. 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 White. Yeah. Okay. And uh, 20 mil of that. Nice. Now, it's also we called call, it... call Me Daiquiri because the spirit, it's a premium spirit. Instead of, it, and that's the beauty of it. So you call to the bar, you need to let them know, I want to call, call Me Daiquiri. And this Daiquiri, is that that cremated 19 rum and the Angus to our magic bitters? Right. There we go. There we go. Right. Nice, we, nice. Call, we call these. Right. right. We, Any, we're getting an anything with shake from Steve. <laughs> we are anything with uh, gold rum or aged rum. We call moody daiquiris because I really love my clean, crisp white rum daiquiris. I love them. I don't really do aged rum in a daiquiri, yeah. but. I, Steve, listen, I, listen, man. Listen, man. Listen, man. Listen, man. You've never seen me without a smile. This daiquiri is one of the reasons, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Here, so here's, a a new name here's a question. For this one for me, man. Here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. Look, uh, I'll put it on screen. What order did the rums become available in the UK? I, th I think 1919 was one of the first, wasn't it? I believe it. Yeah, nineteen eighteen. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, right. go. Give, me give, me give me a shake. Give me a shake, Steve. I'm, all right, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I normally edit all that out. Oh, look, look at that That's That's it. conversation. Man, proper, proper. <laughs> <laughs> That's look it. at the ice on that, right? Yeah, you know when it's shaking good. There we go, boom, and it's not, it's not usually I have to work on live shows. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, no. Is this going to be terrible or is this going to be good? Who's that? Philip, 1919 uh, Daiquiri is lovely. There we go, Philip. Yeah, you know, this is... This one is a guaranteed smile maker. I know that I can put a smile. It's it's, it's a premium daiquiri. Do you know yeah. what? I don't think I've ever put Angostura bitters in a daiquiri. That's it, man. That's it. So you, you know we're dealing with different levels here. It's not just the rum. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> I'm telling you, brother. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, oh. it's, it's a banger, man. It's a banger. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit of a game changer. I know, man. I know, man. It's listen. Angus my room, it, it, Don't don't call me too late, okay? <laughs> 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 that's a, that's actually really. I'll be honest, because so I normally have a little bit less sugar in my daiquiris. But because that's got a little bit more sugar in it, so I followed the recipe that Anna did, because that's got a little bit more sugar in it, that really works well with the Angostura bitters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah it, it, like it's, that. It's, a, it's a great, that one's it's a great one, man. So you get a 60 mLs of the rum, it's, it's super good. Oh. 
Yeah, I can have a few of those. <laughs> yeah, easy, man. <laughs> oh, that's pretty tasty. Look, if there's... Oh, there is a question. Ha hang on. How do I... What's Claire put? How, how do I shake the bitters without getting it on the counter? <laughs> oh, yeah, go on. Go on, hang on. Go I, on I hear the question. <laughs> right, let's, none of this, let's, none of this, let's put Anna on the big screen. Hang on, hang on, Anna. Right. There we go. Demonstrate. <laughs> the art of bitter is pouring. You got like, timid. Pour it out. You got to give a bit like, moving round in the bottle so it doesn't, so, doesn't shoot out at you. But you got to get so, like, so it's a bump down and then in. Yeah, out down. <laughs> it's the <a> bottom. <laughs> awesome. Jumping. It's keen. Yeah. There's this keen. So listen, Steve. I call it dash with confidence. You have to dash with confidence <laughs> when you're dashing. As soon as you pick the bottle up, if you hesitate for a moment, you an extra dash that would hit the person next to you. <laughs> Or it's gonna land on your countertop, <laughs> and and that is why I decant. <laughs> That's another solution. Hang on. I think Tom Tom's got yeah. <laughs> Tom's got a funny question here. Right? How do we? I love that. I do love these little mini bottles of bitters. By the way, right? How do you open the mini bottles of bitters? Secondly, how do I get one or two dashes out without pouring the whole bottle? Right? Okay. I've, so listen. He's out, he so was, the question is from Tom. 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 The minis. I'm supposed to go with the mini alcohol bottles too, right? With the mini alcohol bottles, you don't ever get, you get two drinks from the minis. Not everyone sees it that way. <laughs> so it's kind of similar. So the equation was supposed to be paired with the mini alcohol bottle. So whether it's a, a gin, you know, that was, the, that was kind of the consideration. <laughs> you, yeah, you, get, you get you get drops out of that, Tom. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, get, you easily get drops out of that. What are you, Tom? What are you talking about? Descended to watching you drink. <laughs> oh, I like that. Right. If that is all the questions, uh, I want to say. Th oh, hang on. Sorry, I didn't mean to put that back on. Sorry. I want to say thank you very much to you two. Um, I think we've covered. The bet I could chat if we had a proper internet connection. I would I could chat to you two all flipping night about Angostura and stuff. There's so many questions. Yeah, I feel um, I might. I tell you what. Next year, sometime, I might actually come back to you two and do a, a pre-record, um, where we kind of just deep dive into Angostura. So it's all, yep. or or I grab you at a rum show or something like that because there's so many other yeah. questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there we go. But I'm appreciative of time. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Um, it's been yeah, amazing. Just, I, having us. I love Angostura. Always have done. <laughs> Thank always you so much. Have it's awesome. Angostura. Listen, man, I love the energy always, and I love, love the, what you're doing with the program here. Appreciation for Anna and myself for the House of Angostura. Uh, keep doing the great work, brother. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, t I tell you what we will do next year, sometime around March time, we'll do a, because we, we get my lot do, um, we've got some expensive rums. We might do the 1787 or the 1824, like a little taste Excellent. along, a little pride. That'll be cool. Excellent. That'll be great. Right. Be great. Right, cool. Right, I'm going to let you two go. Uh, everyone else, stay with me because I'm just going to have a little advert break so I can clear up. Um, and then I'll come back and I'm going to do some of the cocktails that are in the, the magazine. So I'm not going anywhere, but thank you very much uh, to these two. All right. Thank you so much, guys. You take care. And I'll see you I soon. Love cocktails, right. Steve. <laughs> Thanks for having, <laughs> having us. Right. I'm going to put that on. Have you joined my rum discord community yet if not you're missing out on all the chats and knowledge with loads of other rum fans and if you don't know what discord is it's just basically a more organized whatsapp where conversations are organized into threads instead of one long feed it's so flipping easy to use even mummy barman could use it now the membership area has at least 40 exclusive threads in there where we deep dive into styles of rum including our beloved order of the string fan club where we talk about these plantation beauties we also have specific rum 
cocktail threads dedicated to the Mai Tai, the Plantas Punch, the Daiquiri, as well as the pre-live show banter threads and anything else in between, including a thread dedicated to trying to wean Scott off his beige food diet. But of course, even for the non-members, there's plenty of threads for you guys to get involved, ask rum questions and talk about rum cocktails. Plus, obviously, all the links where you can see all of my content that I post every week. Now, Discord is available on your mobile and it's also a desktop app too. All you need to do is just follow the link on screen and that'll do everything to get you started. And I promise you, it's so easy to use. It makes Facebook groups look like 1999 tech. What are you waiting for? I'll see you in there. Cheers. Right, and I'm back. Thank you very much for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed that. I know there was uh, a couple of little um, audio issues with that. We did do a test midweek, and it was pretty dissimilar. And and that, but hopefully the sort of messages come across. Um, so thank you very much for sticking with me. What I'm going to do now, because there's a few cocktails in the old uh, magazine, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some of these. So the lemon on the oh, hang on, which this one, the lemon on the rocks, I've already done. And that's how I started the show. What that basically is, uh, for those of you that have not got a magazine, hang on, I could do this for those of you that ain't got a magazine. It's, uh, it's that, it, whoops, oh, there we go, it's that one. So we've got, it's basically a daiquiri with chocolate bitters served over ice. See that? So there you go. So there we go, I'm back to front, there we go. So simple, it's a simple daiquiri with chocolate bitters. And it's, it's no different, to be fair, to what I've just made with that, except that's with Angostura bitters. That's with the Angostura or cocoa bitters, I should say, not chocolate in there. But this, I don't think I've ever done a daiquiri with Angost Angostura bitters. My bar's falling to bits. Don't know what that was. I don't think I've ever done a, a daiquiri with Angostura bitters. That's actually really, really nice. It kind of... It takes you away. So when I drink a daiquiri, I always expect that that clean, uh, clean, crisp thing. But when you've got other flavours at play, you kind of your head's in a different place. I really, really like that. That's a stunner. And the Queen's Park Swizzle. I mean, I've had that before. You've, you've got. I've got the videos up on screen. I don't know that I did it with um, uh, Angostura rum, but this is this is an absolute belter. I love this anyway. Essentially, a mojito without the soda, but with Angostura bitters. So it's essentially that with mint and crushed ice. That's, that's, you know, we're not getting too technical here with these sort of things. So uh, I just want to... Oh, it's the mint that's on the floor. I'm just going to bring... just to, uh, I'm just going to bring this PowerPoint up on screen because there is some decent stuff on here. There's only 10 pages. Right. Uh, so that's the range. That is uh, the premium range. So the 1787 and the 1824. I tried the 1824 down at Runfest. It was absolutely banging. Uh, that's at 25, 25,000 euros. Oh, that's a whopper, isn't it? That is. That's amazing. Uh, that's the house of uh, Angostura or, or TDL, Trinidad Distillery Limited. Sugarcane, for anyone that's never seen sugarcane. Uh, that's that's actually Danielle, obviously, in the photo. And that's what he was talking about, the base of the bottle. I will actually, I'll tell you what I'll do in a second. I will show you that. Uh, 1919, which we chatted about. Right, call me daiquiri. Spiced orange mule, which I'm going to do in a second. And a coffee and cigarettes, which I'm going to do in a second. This is what Danielle was talking about. Because I know I did put it on small screen. But hopefully you can sort of see that on big screen now. Can you see? Hang on. We're upside down. There it is. Can you see the butterfly sort of embossed in the side, in the end of the bottle? That's really interesting about the the butterflies. I never understood that. Always knew it was called the butterfly range, but never understood what the uh, what the uh, what the butterfly had to do with the actual with Angostura. That's really fascinating. Tell you what, I completely forgot. I'm going to uh, take my headphones off as well. So uh, if you've got any questions, any feedback, anything like that, I know the Discord, so uh, I've been jumping in in Discord to try to sort of uh, do a couple of things as well. But one of the mixes I definitely want to do is the spiced orange ginger ale because I flip in that and hopefully it should be this. Uh, yes, yeah, so orange bit is sell it. So it's this. So it's, it's just a simple highball. You know, simple, simple highball. It's that, uh, this one, uh, wrong side again. It's that one there, look. Um, now, this is when we take Stratford sodas out of the equation. I've seen Katie. Hello, Katie. 
<laughs> this is one of my favorite um mixers I, I do absolutely love that but the reason i don't use it too much is because i do prefer the full fat version the full fat version is amazing but obviously i can't handle too much gas these days so it's kind of the full fat version makes me burp it makes me it's got extra sugar but i prefer the taste of it <laughs> Uh, Jim, the, the, I'm not sure the video quality. I can see you on screen. The video quality looks amazing. It was the audio. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the video quality is pretty decent because I've been watching it back on there and the quality looks fine. It was just, it was just the audio. Um, I'm sure, but we'll see after this. So, uh, for a highball, let's actually go in one of these. Get some ice cubes out here. I need, I need a little, I need a little stand. There we go. Need a little stand. Don't forget as well, uh, I mentioned it at the start. If you do, let's just break the bar. If you do want to try the Craft Rum Club um, and get 15% off your first order if you're in the UK, uh, if you go to craftrumclub.co.co uh, and then do whatever you're going to do, order your box, and then the code is STB15. STB15 will get you 15% off your first box. All right, so give that a try. And I have to say, look, I mean, 40 quid or whatever it is, 39.99, whatever it is, um, you know, it's pretty decent value for money because the rums are around about that anyway, all right, probably 32, 33, 34 pounds, something like that. You get the limes, you get the sugar, you get the mixers in there, you get some crisps. Uh, I'm going to save those for a little treat tomorrow. I'm going to have those tomorrow, barbecue rib. If anyone wants my salt and vinegar from the spice drum, you can have that. So I don't do salt and vinegar. Uh, and I did mention this at the start as well, for those of you who have just joined. If you're looking for that, that's the spice drum box. Go and check out the STB Extra on the other channel because I've got a whole half an hour video where I've kind of deep dived with that. Um, so that's on there. Right, let's go for it. Let's go. So uh, 1919. And this is, you know, this, it, it wasn't one of the first rums that I bought because I knew everything about it. It was one of the, and I'm going, literally going back to 2003 here, 2003, 2004. Uh, it was literally that and El Dorado 12 year old that started to come on our supply lists. When we had, so we had Havana seven year old, we had Havana three year old, Bacardi, Bacardi, whatever it was called back in those days, the four, it wasn't called four year old, it was called something else. But these two were two and Pampero. Let's, let's, let's give, be fair. These three were the first premium rums that most buying lists had on them uh, back in those days, 2003. So these were the three pr first, first three premium rums I ever had. And I fell in love with the 1919. Um, to be fair, I've, I've, been permanent stocks. I've always had these three rums, but it's probably been the 1919 that I've drunk the most. Because even back then, I just found it as an easy, approachable rum. I Back then, I had no idea that it was like column still versus pot still and all that. I had no idea about any of that sort of stuff. Uh, so I didn't understand why I liked it so much. But as the years progressed, and as I kind of understood pot still a little bit and column still and, and how uh, TDL, Trinidad Distillers Limited, or House of Angster or whatever you want to call them, how they kind of make the rums, it kind of, I kind of understood why I liked it. Because I do, back in the rum trend, I do love column still. I'm a big, big column still fan. Um, you know, but it's funny because a lot of, and this is, we need to dive, deep dive into this with the UK guys as well. And we perhaps out, uh, ask the outlier, outlier guys next week on the live tasting because most of the UK distillers, get in there, most of the UK distillers are actually pot still rums, but it's a very different sort of pot still to what you get out in the Caribbean. So it's time, times are changing, but I do love a column still. I do absolutely love column still. Right, so um, 1919 and Fever Tree, uh, spiced orange ginger ale. I mean, it's just lovely. Oh, what was it? Orange bitters, wasn't it, in there? Orange bitters. Let's go for a dash of orange bitters. 
There we go. Orange bitters in there, little stir. I have to say that I don't think I, I'm going to have to look back now, go through my um, my notepad to sort of see what I've done with the Queen Park Queen's Park Swizzle because I don't think I've ever done. I might be wrong, but I don't think I've done Angostura rum with it. That's lovely. It's a good cocktail. I, I definitely never, I've definitely never bashed a mint around the glass. <laughs> That's really nice. Right. So 1919 with the orange ginger ale. Mm. I mean, for me, as I say, the only reason I don't have these more these days is I just literally, long COVID and all that malarkey, I literally can't handle gas bubbles fizziness too much but that for me is still one of the best um ginger ales if you like on the market i absolutely love canada dry as a plain ginger ale but the fever tree spiced orange ginger ale is for me is an absolute game changer i have got i have still got a collection of full fat here my own personal stash there we go so that's I think they've even rebranded, to be honest. I think they've, it's a slightly different label, but that's that's the full fat version. And you can sort of see the semi-skimmed, refreshingly light on top. If you ever see the full fat spiced orange ginger ale, get it, because I promise you it is 10 times better than what that is. 10 times better. But I just can't handle it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a victim of age. But that's that's delicious. Love it. Absolutely love it. Right, the next one. Um, the after eight mojito. So again, cocoa bitters with. I've got mint out. I might. I might do the after. Let's do it. Let's do an after eight mojito. Chocolate bitters with a mojito. This is going to be interesting. So uh, I like the whole slappy mint thing on the bottom. Here. Uh, what are we doing for this? So fifteen mil of sugar. Where's my, where's my little jigger? I washed up. I'm assuming it's it. Right, 15 mil of... Hang on. That's the, that's the US one. Where's the UK one? There it is. Right, 15 mil of uh, sugar. One five. We then go... So it's 25. We're going to do the whole thing. We're going to do as I, as I would actually teach on a hen pie. I was actually on a hen pie on Friday night, to be fair. Uh, so uh, 25 mil of sugar syrup of sorry lime juice uh, 50 ml double bubble of the rum that i've just moved there it is there we go so this is this is exactly what i teach on a hen pie 50 ml 25 ml 15 ml and then you can add more sugar if you want to at the end mint let's do that 8 to 10 mint leaves boom 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 Twist the old head off. Get rid of that. In the bin. Slappy poo. Pop that in. Sticky fingers. There we go. Right. Uh, chocolate bitters. Right, Tom. Here's the test. Here's the test, young Tom. What's he gone? Four dashes of cocoa bitters. Do we get four dashes out of here? Yeah, easy. There we go. We can pour it as well. <laughs> Not sure how much left of that. Off bowl. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, and then it'll be soda water and crushed ice. Oh, no. No soda water. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. Ice and soda in the old description. Right. I've got some soda left over from somewhere. Uh, let's get that. That should be fizzy still. A little bit. There we go. And crushed. Crushed ice. Crushed ice. Always got a bag of crushed ice. Magic. There we go. That'll, that'll do. That'll do. Right. I have to say, with the old... um, This one at the start and the night, the sort of... What was it? It was the... Lim uh, limbing on the beach or liming on the beach, however you say it. Chocolate with the daiquiris is interesting. So chocolate mint, I love, I love mint and chocolate. There we go. 
<laughs> love each other. And it's interesting as well. Like, I've seen videos and stuff, how to use the old lele stick, the old swizzle stick. But I've never... Right, A, there was two things that came out of that. I've always... You know, I, I get that, raising it up there. I get that. But I've never done, like, the halfway up swizzle, where you kind of do that. Just to agitate the top bit. It's always kind of at the bottom there. But I've also never done that either. That's really funny. I don't know whether you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious right so thanks daniel for that that's what i mean with without without being funny we kind of you know, we see youtube videos we read books and stuff but we never sort of hear the authentic stories that would come out like daniel's just shown us actually how to use a swizzle stick properly or and how to swizzle the cocktail whereas you know the instructions i normally give stick your swizzle stick in just swizzle <laughs> <laughs> you don't really think about it. you just sort of blending the top half up here right uh so the old chocolate mojito what's it called after after eight mojito oh i'm sucking up mint now it's actually quite nice mint mint and chocolate i will say the rum adds to that if that was a white rum, that's quite fascinating, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking a whole different mojito deep dive here with cocktails with uh, on video. Because if that was a white rum, that wouldn't work. The rum and the chocolate, the cacao notes, the chocolate notes. Let's just call it chocolate. Quite like that. That's quite fascinating, actually. That still has an amazingly refreshing, light, crisp taste. I mean, Trinidad, it's column still rum anyway. So, you know, I, I'm pretty convinced, you know, if that was a pot still rum in there, I wouldn't be that fanatical over it i'll be like yeah it's all right but it's colin i love colin colin still gives that different just add rum oh uh, if i dipped out there i've just had big yellow signs on my thing saying the uh the connections gone but i'm back right uh we've got that we've got that the next one Coffee and cigarettes. Now, I can't do this properly in here, but I have got a hack to do this. This I'm going to show you uh, that one there. So coffee and cigarettes. That's what we kind of do, and it wants me to kind of smoke the glass. Now, I can't do that because I haven't got a smoker, and I'm not a huge fan of smoky stuff, but I have got a hack for this, which I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you. I do like a little hack, a little cheat mode. By the way, you've all gone. There's loads of you watching, and the comments have completely and utterly disappeared. And I don't know whether it's me or whether you lot are just listening and watching a lot. I don't know. But if you've got any, if you've got any chat, if you've got any feedback, if you want me to perform or do whatever, uh, give, give me a shout. But I'm quite happy just chatting to myself. I do that quite a lot. Anyway. Um, right, let's put that in there. So the... Um, the glass I'm going to use for this is that. We'll, we'll do that. And what I've actually got, so basically what they want to do, what it is, it's, uh, how, how are they making it? Place a bit of wood, blah, 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 smoking, smoking, large ice cube, mixing glass. Right. So, actually, I'm going to do it a different way. So, they want that, they want this made properly. So what you would do, you would get, um, you get your lump of wood, you've got a smoke, what they call a smoking wood whatever and you set fire to it and you put a glass and you collect smoke and all that sort of stuff and that gives you the sort of smoky vibes and then you make your cocktail rum fashioned whatever you do what you're doing in there and pour it in pour it straight over there now i'm not a huge fan of that i don't really like smoky stuff but what i do like is something like that um this this better's bitters smoke and oak um uh, bitters. Now, 
annoyingly, I've put them away. But I should have a spritz somewhere. Yes, I've got one here. Hang on. Let me just let me just decant this. There we go. All right. There we go. Right. These haven't come out to play for a long, long time. But I've got spritz caps for the top of my bit of bitter bottles, right? So what I've got. There we go. So hopefully what you'll see is smoking oak bitters. And we just kind of line the inside of the glass like that. And that really does give it that sort of smoke effect without smoke. If you know what I mean? And I, I kind of like that. So then what we're going to do. This is coffee, isn't it? I think. So 50 ml of rum, 25 ml of Mr. Black and cocoa bitters. Right. So I'm going to do that. Angostura. Uh, 50 ml. Cool. <laughs> tell you what, the sort of the smoky, the smoky woody kind of notes rocking around the bar at the moment is um I could I see the question, Scott. I'll be there in a sec. Uh, the smoke and oaky notes that are coming around the bar. I get those bitters are really good. Those little spritz caps on bitters are great for that. So we've got that. We've got Mr. Black somewhere. Let's go Bundaberg, Mr. Black. Uh, 25 mil. So 15 and 25. Perfect. And then three dashes, apparently, of Angostura cacao bitters. Now, I'm not sure how many bitters we're going to, how many dashes we're going to get out of this. We can pour it. <laughs> Tom, I see what you mean. <laughs> I'm 100% with you, Tom. Ig ignore what I said earlier in jest. I'm 100% with you. <laughs> right, so. Stir that down. Right, if you were doing mint syrup and no mint leaves. Right, hang on. I'll put that up. On, I'll, I'll get into the questions in a sec. I'll put that up on screen in a sec, Scott. So I'm assuming there's a lot of blurb with this, but I'm assuming this is a good one for cigars. Catastrophic fire, blah, blah, blah. Skim reading. The combination of rum, coffee, cocoa bitters play perfectly together with the added dimension from smoking. Uh, look, if you, I know there's a few of you here. If you love that whole smoky kind of thing, get one of those, I forget what they're called now. Get one of those wood block things and you could just, it's basically a chunk of wood like that you just put it down, you set fire to it, it kind of there, you put your glass, it kind of, you know, smokes and you collect, it's great, you know, a lot of high-end cocktail bars have them, I don't really do that smoke, I, I don't mind the flavour of smoke, but I don't do smoke, if that sounds, <coughs> if you can get your head around that. <laughs> that's actually really, that's actually really nice. No sweetness to that at all because the Mr. Black is dry. You do not lose that rum at all. I dare say, and this is personal preference, I want a darker rum with that. And that is purely preference because I know there's a few of you I know do not like dark rums. Um, but that That's... I mean, that is delicious, absolutely delicious. I just want that slight sort of hint of caramel in there, if you know what I mean. Do you know what? Do you know what that actually needs? This is going to be, this is going to be interesting. Oh. Let's go in, because I was going to go the Amaro. I might just go, oh, just broken that. Uh, I might just go the, um, see, it all happens on the live show, don't I? I might just go Angostura Bitters in there. A couple of, one more. Just needs something. Perhaps it does need the actual smoke. Yeah, forget that. I don't want the caramel notes to from the rum now. That's really good. So I've got both bitters in that. I've got the cacao bitters and the Angostura bitters, or aromatic bitters, I should say. Now. That is delicious. Right. Uh, Scott, I think that's the last cocktail. I think that's the last cocktail. 
Let me just double check. And then it's a free for all on banter, on questions. Right. Dark and Stormy. Da, 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 da. The After Eight Magito. Yeah, we are done. We are done. I, my favorite cocktail at night. Uh, oh, tough call. The daiquiri, the Angostura daiquiri, followed by the Queen's Park Swizzle. Amazing. Um, and then, do you know what? I, I'm going to put all of them. I'm going to sit on the fence. I'm going to get splinters. All of those next. The coconut water is delicious as well. Although not now. There's <laughs> too much water in it now. Right. Let's dive into some of these comments, questions. Uh, wormwood, wormwood flipping bitters. Why would you have those? I don't know. Right, there's a question here. Da, 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 da. Right, Scott Newbury. There we go. Question If you were doing mint syrup and had no mint leaves, would you do 15 mil or up it slightly? It all depends how strong your mint syrup is. I'll, I'll be honest. If I was using monin, I would 100% start at 15 mil. Right, here we go. I know what I'm, exactly what I'm going to say. I would 100% start at 15 mil, but there was potential with Monin to maybe go up to 20 mil, maybe go up to 25 mil. If I was using George's, William Fox's, I 100% would go no further than 15 mil because that is mint on steroids. But what I might have to do with George's is maybe add a touch of plain sugar to it, uh, if you get what I mean. There, there's a very different level of, of mintiness and sweetness between the Monin and William Fox. All right. So Monin, Monin treat is standard, as you would. George's punch in flavour, but they do make it a little bit harder to balance with the sugar level. Hopefully you understand that. Uh, if you don't, I'll explain it a bit more. I'll try and say it a different way, but Basically, George's is extra minty, but you kind of might have to add extra sugar to it, if you know what I mean. Right. Uh, I'm just interested in what you're making, Mark. I've, do you know what? I've skim read before I was waiting to come on the live. I've skim reading that whole chat with the um, the um, uh, what's it called? Paranormal activity with all that. That's quite fascinating, actually. I'll, I'll, I'll go back and read it properly later. Uh, like the hack. Cheers, Wendy. I'm full of hacks. Uh, I'm on the Xmas cake rum. What's that? You're right, Mark. I'm on the Xmas cake and rum. Christmas cake already. Where's Mummy Barman tonight? Mummy Barman would be watching I'm a Celebrity or whatever the hell was on TV. Uh, she's probably in the jungle, yeah. <laughs> or not. Question, right, Steve. Havana, Steve. Question, what would you recommend doing in the Maro? So, right, yeah, we didn't really cover this. Um, I have done the video, but I'm assuming a lot of you would have seen the video, but you don't have to. So, we're going to do it right here. The Amaro, right, let, let me just give you, as I've destroyed the glass, <laughs> look at that, look at that, can you see that? A broken, broken glass there, destroyed it. Let's get another. And I'll try and give you tasting notes on this. Although there's not much to kind of talk you through. Bakes, I've seen that. I'll get to that in a second as well. Right. Are you Ant Bakes in Discord? Ant Bakes? I'm sure I've seen that in the, in the non-members area. I'm sure I've seen that. Right. So what these are, what this is, right, hang on. Because some of you might not have even seen this. Right. Let's, let's just have a look at this, right. Amara de Angostura, and I'll kind of, I know uh, Danielle explained it, but I'm just going to give you layman's term of what this is, right, there we go, 35% ABV, one. I'm going to give you layman's term, what Amaro is, okay, so Amaro is basically a, a liqueur, don't think of that as sweet, but a, a liqueur in that sort of sense that is has a, a collection of herbs and spices. So, um, hang on, that's the obvious one. That is actually an Amaro, 
okay? It's a category, so that's an Amaro. Aperol is an Amaro. Um, Jägermeister is an Amaro. Okay, so you can so you can appreciate that versus um, Jägermeister instantly have got different flavour profiles. So an Amaro is not a specific thing. Sue's, have I got the Sue's here? Sue's will be here somewhere, I think, because I don't think it's a drink stuff. Um, but a lot of you will know exactly what I mean by Sue's. Sue's is also an Amaro, and it's a gentian liqueur. So don't think Amaro is universal. Don't think you can have one Amaro that goes into uh, every single cocktail. All Amaros will be different. There was one more I was going to show you, and it should be right here if I can see it. Mr. Black has also got that as an Amaro. So it's a coffee Amaro, completely and utterly different to Jägermeister. Completely and utterly different to, um, what would you say, to Campari. I can't see... I can't see the Sue's. The Sue's will be here somewhere. I don't know where it is. Nah, I don't know where the Sue's is. So that's what Namara is. It's basically a base spirit with herbs and spices. So what this is, Angostura Amaro, is Angostura bitters as a liqueur, <laughs> essentially. 37, 35% ABV. So you get the sweetness to it. It has got that sweetness to it, but it's got the Angostura bitter note to it as well. And I find this a really fascinating ingredient. It's a cocktail I'm doing very soon on the channel uh, that has a pimento dram. And I think, I think this is a hell of a substitute for it. It's really good. It's basically, best way to describe it, Angostura bitters liqueur. That's the best way I could describe it. Angostura bitters with sugar. Not overly sweet, but it's phenomenal. I absolutely love it. So the cocktail that Anna, you probably, you hopefully should have heard Anna. Um, I know it was a bit breaking up and stuff, but the cocktail they were rocking out at Rumfest was, I'm going to do it with, um, I'm actually going to do it with the seven, but it was 1824. It was their 1824 rum. Hang on, let's let's do this now. Oh, hang on. Hide, uh, hide, hide, hide. It was the 1824 um, as, as a Manhattan, essentially. So that instead of a mooth. Uh, so I'm going to do a little one. So we're going basically 25, uh, 50 mil, say, of your booze. And then you would do 25 mil of your Amaro. So I've done 25 and I'm going to do 15. Okay, that is as simple and as technical as it needs to be. You don't need to add bitters to that at all. I'm just going to add a bit of ice. Kind of stir that down. Um, I think she did use cacao bitters in that, chocolate bitters as well. I'm, I'm going to use my Miss Betters. Sorry. I'm going to use my, my Miss Betters chocolate bitters in here. There we go. Little, little bit of chocolate bitters in there. Uh, and then it's a stirry, stirry, stirry. I might have to use the lele stick. Where's my spoon, bar spoon? Oh, well, that's going to be a pain in the backside, isn't it? Where's my bar spoon gone? If you can see the bar spoon, there it is. If you can see the bar spoon. Right. I always pick this glass up for stirring. I completely forget. It's like... Sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why did I pick that? I've done that so many times, I completely forget because I don't know whether you can see the glass. It's kind of uh, hexagonal. It makes a bloody racket. And I've gone to do that in video so many times. I was like, you twat. <laughs> right, bear with me. Two seconds. Right, that'll do. That'll do. Sorry. Uh, and, and Angostura, Manhattan. Amazing. It's flipping delicious. Again, that's a video in its own right on the STB Extra channel. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I So Manhattan would normally be vermouth. I'm not a huge fan of vermouth. There's a couple of brands that are passable. I like La Stau. Um, But to swap out that, 
And I dare say, and I know for a fact, the 1824, the rum in there is even better than the uh, Angostura, if you know what I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, the 18, yeah, the 1824 is even better than the 1919 because it's perfectly suited for that. But the 1919 works. The seven, I think, works really, really well in there. But the 1824 has got a little bit more depth of a uh, little bit more depth of flavour. Right. There was another question. Uh, I'm sure there was another question up here. I'm scrolling back. I'm scrolling back. Bakes. Where's Bakes gone? Ant Bakes. There is. Right. Um, right. Is there? Is there a better coconut rum than Coca Cano? You have recommended it, and honestly, Steve, you are really wrong. It's the best. <laughs> oh, yes, I did see this. Right. Right. Let's put this into perspective. Um, Coco Canu is... So Coco Canu, for those of you who don't know, is... I'm not saying it's that rum, but it's Rain Nephew rum with coconut. That's exactly what Coco Canu is. Coco Canu is a Rain Nephew brand. All right. Um, weirdly, not available in the Caribbean or in the US. It's only available in the UK. Weirdly, I, th I still don't understand that, but it is Rain Nephew. It's a Rain Nephew brand. Rain Nephew obviously own Appleton as well. Appleton and Rain Nephew are one in the same. Um, so it's a decent run, but the coconut is amped up. It is very, it's a sweeter coconut. It's very in your face. So what I take from this, and is, is it, I'm assuming it's Ant or Anthony, whatever, whatever your first name is. I'm really, really sorry. Bakes, however you want to be known. What I'm assuming is you've got the sweeter tooth. Because if that's uh, the best coconut rum you've ever had, I'm assuming what I'm about to say you might not like. Okay? For me, what is actually better... Oh, I can't reach. There we go. Is... Um, a Luna, but a Luna is very different. A Luna is dialed back and sort of toasted coconut flavour. Um, not as sweet. Really not as sweet. I use Coco Canu on hen parties because I know that'll be wasted on them. I, I know that for a fact. So I would I use Coco Canu for hen parties. No questions asked because that is exactly... The market's for. I flipping love Coca Cano. To be fair, it's luscious, sweet, coconutty in your face. You know, it's amazing. But for me personally, coconut daiquiris and all that sort of stuff, I actually go stuff like Luna. Um, I would talk about plantations cut and dry, but you know, unless you're in Barbados, you can't really get it. I've still got my little. I I kind of have a little nibble at it there, like a couple of mil here and there. But I've still got my little stash of plantation cut and dry. The closest. Unless plantation go against everything they've kind of stand for with cut and dry, the closest we will ever get to a commercial release of cut and dry in the UK is Cane Rock. Cane Rock is, is Jamaican rum and not Barbados rum, but it is a heavy coconut vibe to it. It's dialed back coconut, not in your face sweet coconut, but it's essentially a coconut ginger Jamaican spiced rum. But please do not think it is even remotely in Coca Canu's playground. Coca Canu is a sweet, in your face coconut. This isn't. This is dialed back. Plant, uh, cut and dry is dialed back. So that's the best I can kind of give you with coconut. Right, more because of Pam. The gas has started to hit me now a little bit. New fan of Angostura here, slightly hungover, some might need an early night. Honestly, I. I love, you know what I'm like with column still rums. I absolutely adore Angostura. You know, I, you can see that's a brand new bottle of seven. You, you know, you can see how much 1919 I go through quite a lot. I'll be honest, the white. I, if you're if you're brand loyal, Angostura white 100% does the job for you. 100% is a cracking white rum. If you're not worried about brand loyalty, for me, there are. I was going to say better. I'm not going to say better. There are other white rums I appreciate more than this. Um, 
genuinely, my honest belief in this, this is a 37 and a half percenter. My honest belief, if that was 40, I think that would bring a whole different thing to it. I think it just needs the bump in alcohol. I think that's the only thing. I don't think 37 and a half percent does this rum justice. They're, they're experts. They are blenders. There's a reason they blend it at 37 and a half percent instead of 40. They obviously think it tastes better at 37 and a half. I just want that extra little bump in alcohol in that. It, it's not bad tasting. I just lose it a little bit in daiquiris, in mojitos. My own personal viewpoint. You know, I would, I would genuinely love to see that at 40. I would genuinely love to sort of see that at 42. But 40, for me, would probably complete. I've, I've tasted a lot of rums at 37.5%. And I've tasted a lot of rums, white rums I'm talking about, at 40%. And while they're not the same rums, the 40% just have something extra about them. And, and I, I, I'm convinced, if that was 40, I'm convinced it would revolutionise that. I think that would potentially be one of the go-to column steel white rums because it does taste really good. It just lacks the bump in alcohol that you want. It's just a weird thing. 37 and a half, it doesn't sound much, but 37 and a half to 40, it's just, it, it isn't much. In the grand scheme of things, it's peanuts. It's two and a half percent. But it's just this weird, weird thing. Things come out to play more at 40%. Things come out to play even more at 42 and 44%, 45%. I would love to taste that at 40. I would absolutely love to taste that at 40. So, yeah, uh, that's that. Uh, coconut rum, I'd say no. Coconut liqueur, bounty. But the, the question here we go. I love these. Well trained, well trained. Right. Can you explain the difference between being a member and a non member of the Discord? Right. So, yes. <laughs> the membership, right. The membership on Discord. So, what you have to do, and this will be changing in January, February time. But at the moment, uh, if you are a member of my YouTube channel, so if you click join, and you pay your five pound a month, four ninety nine a month. Um, you DM me, private message me, and I unlock the rest of the Discord for you. I'll be honest, the outer part of Discord is not that lively at all. It really isn't. The inner, the membership area of Discord is <laughs> literally on fire. You know, there's an extra four. I think it's forty. I don't, I don't know without counting up. I'm going to say forty. Probably ten of those are not used too much. We've got rums. We've got um, so we've got a rum category alone, which is uh, like um, separated up into uh, groups. So we've got the order of the string, which is plantation. Essentially, we've got the plantation group. We've got Spanish style. We've got French style. We've got English style. We've got UK rum uh, threads in there where we chat about UK rums. Uh, what's the other rums we've got in there? Sherry aged Barbados. Hang on, let's get rid of that. Barbados, Jamaican, Cuban. We've got all those thre all those threads where we talk about the different rums in there. Uh, I go into I'm, I'm very rare, very rarely in the sherry, for instance, except if I'm winding windy up. Uh, but I I kind of in the Cuban a little bit and the English and the UK. I'm 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 now unofficially the official UK rum ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to big up UK rums. I've got this thing for 2023. I'm going to big up UK rums. So uh, that's what we're going to do in there. Um, we've got the try before you buy. So the taste a lot. So next week, we've got the guys from Isle of Man coming on, Outlier Distillery. Um, so we've got them. So if you're a member, if you're in, if you're in that part of the Discord, you get the option to sign up and join in the try, not the try before you buy, the taste alongs. All right, so my lot, the membership will already have their samples for next um, uh, next Saturday, Sunday. So we've got these two, these two rums next Sunday, which I'm really looking for. I cannot wait. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing your reactions to these. So we've got Hooli, White Rum, Manx. It's not Manchester, it's Island Man. That's really confusing as well because Manx is Manchester as well. But we've got that. And we've got that, which is Hurricane, not Hooligan, uh, 64%. I cannot wait to see and hear the members' 
feedback on these two rums because I've fallen in love with these. The Steel from Scratch in the Isle of Man. Uh, Rick and Ian, I cannot wait to have those two on next week. That is going to be phenomenal. So you get a chance to be involved in those. Uh, plus, I've got the try before the buy, before you buy as well. You know, all of these behind me, you can get a 30 mil dram. You can try them at home um, without having to buy a bottle to see what they're like. So there's a lot of membership perks. It's a fiver a month. It will be changing in January, February time. January, hopefully, it'll be... I'll still keep the membership there in Discord, in uh, um, YouTube, but uh, I'll open the membership on Discord. So it'll be a Discord membership thing. So it should be a lot more fluid, a lot more automated, if you know what I mean. But that's that's for me to talk about in end of December, January time. But yeah, basically for a fiver a month, buy my stuff, your rum world changes. Right, Robert. Oh, Trinidad Sour. I just saw the words Trinidad Sour. Yes, I made a Trinidad Sour once. And still bitters uh, as the base. It was a bitch much for me. Right. The Trinidad Sour is amazing. I'm going to have to hold up. Trinidad Sour is amazing with that. I, I genuinely do not comprehend people that want to drink that knee. <laughs> I, I just don't get it. I've seen it, as I said in the live. I've seen it on videos. I've seen other bartenders do it. I don't comprehend it. The Amaro, 100%. Yes, you have to play about with the ratios the because that's got your sugar in it already you might want a little bit of extra sugar it's up to you maybe not for me but you know i it's a dialed it's a dialed back more friendly version of angostura bitters that's the best way i can describe it so it's a hundred percent going to be that sort of drink right uh, jaron i like that i'm going to call her that now ja, jaron <laughs> I'm assuming that's Karen. Uh, Karen Kalani. Kalani, yeah, it's a Mexican. Um, I, lo I love Kalani. Kalani. Oh, if I can get my belly over the top. Kalani. Kalani will be here as well. I'm not sure I can get my belly. Hang on. Hang on. Bear with. I've always I've always got some Kalani. I've just destroyed so some bit has gone somewhere. That's Kalani. It is a liqueur. It's not a rum, but it tastes. It just tastes like dipping your straw into a coconut. To be fair, um, it's amazing. It's Mexican as well. Thirty percent ABV, so it's you know it's a healthy liqueur. It's better than Malibu. Malibu is what seventeen percent or whatever the hell it is. Um, Bounty is another coconut liqueur. There's a lot of coconut liqueurs out there, but coconut rums there's a handful, if that. Right, hide. Uh, not Campari. Oh yeah, can't got that. Philip never liked Campari. Uh, see, this is the thing, right? I've never liked Campari. I'm the same. I've never liked Campari, but I now appreciate that 15 mil in a cocktail. As long as it's balanced, it's a game changer. It really is. It may be an age thing. Um, I cannot drink Campari straight. I could not drink Campari in orange, Campari in soda. Anything like that is way too bitter for me. But 15 mil in something like the Jungle Bird that's blended down or, or whatever you want to call it, flash blended down, is it, honestly, it's a game changer. I, I'm definitely restocking. I need to restock. There's a few, quite a few things I need to restock here. Uh, but 100%, Campari is a permanent stock for me. Definitely not drinking it neat. But that little touch, that bittersweet thing it adds to cocktails, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So bear with it. Don't write it off. Um, don't have it on its own. <laughs> don't have it with soda. But definitely try it in. Try, if, a, if, if you don't like it, try, say, like seven and a half mil in a cocktail, maybe 10 mil, and then work up from there. Like, get used to it. Because I promise you, once you start to appreciate it, it's... It, it's just a whole different layer in cocktails. It's unbelievable. Right. I'm sure Tom is trying to get... Oh, I'm like 15... I'm, I'm scrolling just so you know. I'm 15 minutes behind in the chat. <laughs> so I'm catching up slowly. It's a big, long block. Campari is the quiet taste for sure, but it came from Steve did it. Spice Oh, there we go. Yes. Cheers, Rob. Yes. 
basically exactly what I've just said. <laughs> Cheers, Robert. Right. I thought I was bad before an open plantations. Windy's not windy. Oh yeah, wind, Windy's the cane. What's it called? The Cane Rum Society for Sweden in Wales. Right. Du, du, du. Right, Philip. Definitely, definitely, definitely get involved in the jungle bird. I promise you, it's when you look at the cocktail and ignore the Campari in it, it's such a basic cocktail. But the, the Campari adds a whole different dimension to it. And that opening line, I can still envisage what I said in that opening line of the video. And I think it was something like basically, the whole premise was when I shook the cocktail, it didn't give me the same vibe as what when I flash blended. When I flash blended that cocktail, um that's when i fell in love with it but the campari that's what i mean shaking it with campari isn't the same as flash blended it with campari it's this weird thing in my head and it just it was it's phenomenal and i i fallen in love with that cocktail now absolutely right hang on add or hive hive there we go right would be interesting swapping a vermouth with a bit in the el presidente uh, that, yeah, definitely. Of the cane rock question. Here we go. That's what I like. Ants on it, any? Is it ants? Is it Anthony? Is it just bakes? What are we calling you? Bakes makes? What are we calling you? I want, I want a run with you. How and when can this happen? <laughs> and the rums are on me. I want to quiz you on rum. Uh, where are you? <laughs> if you're, if you're in the Caribbean, if you want to pay for a flight over, I'll come over. But I've got a sneaky suspicion you're in the UK. Where are you? Uh, the big next big big meetup is going to be Rumfest, um, Manchester Rumfest in July. Um, but we can arrange something before that, it, depending where you are in the country. Because I'm next year, I'm getting out and about a lot. There's so many, so many places, so many bars I want to go, so many tastings I want to do, so many distilleries I want to do. So I'm going to be on the road a little bit next year. Um, because I'm, I just, I'm the UK rum ambassador. I just, think, I just need to pull my finger out the backside. <laughs> so yeah. Um, oh, hang on. What if I, well, I like bumber and crack and cut through spice. I will try a Luna. Oh, okay, so right. Uh, ants on there. Yeah. Uh, Banks, where, Banks, where are you? This, this could get potential for um a decent meetup. <laughs> <laughs> right, I love to visit Black Parrot, but I'm not for. Hang on, I saw a Black Parrot comment. What was the Black Parrot? I'm scrolling back. Black Parrot. Uh, whenever and hope your wallet's full. Yes, I'm down at Black Parrot next week. No, week after next. Week after next. Uh, Skylark guys are there. We're having a tasting of uh, some benevolence. Enjoy auction. Up north, join the family bakes. I love it. Everyone's everyone's bullying bakes. Bakes five for a month. What's a five for a month? Come on, recession. There's no recession. Don't listen to the media. The recession's not coming. You know, just work a bit more. Sell a bit more stuff. You know, easy. Don't need recessions. It's all media hype, innit? Uh, <laughs> sorry for those. Sorry for those of you that have got mortgages and stuff like that. <laughs> Should laugh. But no, it's, I, I, uh, yeah. Don't get me started. That's a whole different conversation. Anyway. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, yes. See, I love it. I love the rum community. I love you lot. You lot are phenomenal. Right. You are where I was three years ago. There's a lot to get through. Education and tastings. Hope you'll be like me, being freed from the matrix. What? Hope you, hope your mind. Ah, right. Okay. I get it. Take the red pill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kalani Coconut Bakes. Order of the String. Yeah. I kind of. Uh, yeah, this Order of, Order of the String shenanigans happening next year. Watch this space. I do love you. It's the, that's the thing, you know, and I can, I can now that, you know, we've gone past the, whatever, we've gone past the 10 o'clock watershed, you know, when all the, uh, the people that are just tuning in for the first time are kind of left and all this. We, I know it's the hardcore lot that's still here. 
No. There's certain things I can do on this channel, like the live streams have to move to the other channel. They have to move to the extra, it's to be extra, because that is what is holding this channel back. Because this stream alone will have had two, three, four hundred people tuning in. I'll see the stats afterwards. Uh, will have had whatever, bare minimum, two hundred and fifty people join us. But people don't do live streams. People don't only want five or ten minute videos, so they just haven't got the attention span. So YouTube sees that as a signal and it's like, oh, they're not interested in this content and stops promoting the channel. Right. So what I need to do is use this channel as the funnel and just have content where the average view time is 50, 60 percent of a video. Use that as the funnel and use STB extra is the stuff where I just do this, where I just chat, talk bullshit, talk, you know, you know, I've got so many videos. Honestly, I could rock out a video every single day on the STB extra channel at the moment. I've got so much planned. And then it's without, I forget who it was now, um, Henry, Germany, German Henry. You know, Steve, you've not even done those yet. You know, I can't talk about these on this channel because it just won't get the views. Iriso, uh, the Isan Thailand rum, the Novofogu, the, the sugarcane juice rums. I cannot do those rums on this channel. It just will not get views. No one's interested. So that, that and I want to do the take. I've not even opened them yet. They, these genuinely have not been opened. Um, so I kind of want to, I want to taste them. I want to do a video. I want to do that. So that's STB extra. That's why I've done the second channel. I should have launched a different rum channel August last year. Should have done that. Hindsight, wonderful thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this channel has got to be the funnel. It's got to be crack. You know, really drilled in clickbaity titles to bring the rum community in. And then once they find this. Once they find us to be extra, then, you know, the real hardcore fans are involved and we have lots of fun. There's lots of education. It's just the way YouTube works. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because it pays my bills, pays the wages and all that sort of stuff. But to grow is where it is. It'd be funny if STB Extra actually outgrew <laughs> the other channel where there's no editing, there's no dodgy clickbaity titles, there's no <laughs> any of that. It will be funny. But yeah, that's what's in store. There's a lot of stuff planned. There's a lot of brands that we're, gonna, that we're getting involved with and all this sort of stuff. It's, it's a lot of stuff happening next year. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun times. No recession in rum, I tell you. Right. Uh, Claire, not just your rum world changes, your life changes, bank account, yeah, happiness. Oh, what's that? Is that five zeros? One, two, is that 10,000 or 100? 10,000 times better. Cool. Claire's, Claire's, Claire's like 100, 10,000 times happier. Oh, Malibu Black. Ah, oh, question, question, question. If anyone's got Malibu Black uh, and has done a little taste test on Malibu Black, let us know. I'm, on an, I'm intrigued. I am genuinely 100% no, sarcastic. I'm genuinely intrigued about Malibu Black. I, I can't lie. I'm intrigued. Uh, question. Oh, ants are, he's, he's, he's on there. When I'm an alcoholic from rum drinking, will you come and see me in the hospital? Uh, <laughs> you run this out. You won't be an alcoholic. You're wrong, Steve. I'm never wrong. Big G's wrong. I'm never wrong. What am I wrong about? If I... What am I wrong about, Scott? Because obviously I was responding to something I said, and that was 10 minutes ago. So I forgot what I've said now. What am I wrong about, Scott? Right. Uh... Josh. Hello, Josh. Jungle Bird highlights good rums. They're great seller where I work. Oh, Josh, where'd you work? Drop it. Drop it in the comments. Where'd you work? Ant is fine. See, I asked that question literally 20 minutes ago, and now I've got the answer. Hello, Ant. <laughs> Bakes, near Manchester. <gasps> Excuse me. I got all excited. Right. Manchester Rumfest. 
Um, you will see the date. As soon as you become a member, you'll see the dates and you'll see the prior planning already. But there's potential that Mr. Dave Marsland, Mr. Mr. Drinks Enthusiast, Mr. Bounty, Mr. Chairman's Reserve UK, um, there's potential of a little kind of extracurricular rum shenanigans happening after Manchester Rum Fest. Exclusive. Uh, July the 8th. I've forgotten what the date is now. Hang on. Let's scroll forward. June. July the 8th, 2023. Most of this lot, and I'm going to bully them, most of this lot will be in Manchester. Manchester Rum Fest. There we go. <laughs> what is is he is he a bit giddy i would normally only buy for jennifer lawrence okay I'll, I'll take that i mean she's a stunner but you know i mean come on hang on she she's just no i i, I ain't kidding you. she she's a stunner let's be honest but hello <laughs> uh, right The comments are getting a little bit funny now. What, the wife bought a stick? What, the wife bought a stick on for soup? What's a stick on for soup? <laughs> the wife bought a stick on for soup. I'm well on my way to burning it out with trying to blend to... Uh, I've no idea what that means. <laughs> oh, oh, he's, there we go. <laughs> Oh, I love what I correct. Right, stick blender. Yes, right. Um, uh, here's my flash blender. Hang on. Dun, dun, dun. It's without like causing too much damage. There we go. There, there's my, there's my. I think. Oh, bloody! It was heavy. One-handed heavy. There you go. That's my little. It's a little buffalo. Little buffalo. Look. It's like 100 quid. It's the best 100, generally the best 100 quid I've spent in this bar. It's amazing. Especially when you're like 45 and can't be asked to shake cocktails anymore. Right. Uh, bakes in the UK. In the UK, we're only ever an hour's drive away, which can be sorted. I'll tell you what, if, if it was only an hour's drive away, I'd be bloody home in Cornwall every weekend. How much drive? It's like six hours to Cornwall. What are you talking about? It's like four hours to you in Manchester. What? Flipping hell. I think I think Ants had a few cheeky rums tonight. <laughs> Bakes, Bakes, if you right, by the time I wake up in the morning, if you haven't joined, you know, all this, all it, all this chit chat, you know, back yourself. Back your chat. Come on, back your chat. Fiverr, Fiverr, join, join in. You know. I'm only friends with people that pay me. <laughs> you have to pay to be my friend. <laughs> How funny is that? Oh, right. Spugless Cove for me. Oh, he's a scouser as well. Bob's, Bob's and George. What? Spugless Cove a few months back. Apparently love tipping very well, trying out rums. Oh. <laughs> Steve the barman. What? 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 Who? What? When? Who? What do I have? Black. What? Hang on. Black. What have I missed? Steve the barman. So I has the black. What? What black? Is that Malibu black? I don't have Malibu black. Black. What else? What, have, what else are we talking about? I'm scrolling back now. Black. I don't know what that is. I would love to have Malibu Black, if that's what we're talking about. I don't think that's what we're talking about. Dun, 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 dun. Riddling Rack, Milton. Uh... So hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Right. And are you telling me when you said near Manchester, you actually meant Liverpool? <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. Uh... 
Yes. See, look, this is what's going on, right? July the 8th, this is Manchester Runfest. This is going to be huge because uh, we're all going to be up. So Manchester Runfest is just the Saturday and it'll be 12 till 5, maybe 12 till 6, whatever it is. Um, five hours in Manchester, but the hardcore will be up there Sunday, uh, Friday night. We'll have dinner Friday night. I'm going to sort out, sat well, there's two possibilities. Option A, it's not an option. It depends how it goes with Dave. I'm going to work this out. But option A, I'm going to take care of Saturday night and we um, sort of have a sit-down dinner. But I've got a funny feeling Dave might be looking at a rum tour. We've got ideas. So there might be a rum tour on Saturday night, not the after party thing that we did like that was dull and boring. That was pointless last year. Um, but a kind of little bit of a rum tour next year. And then on Sunday lunchtime, 100% uh, Albert Schloss Sunday roast. You have to do Albert Schloss Sunday roast. Um, so that that would be how I envision it going, but watch your space. So Claire's there, Scott's there. Uh, and Tom... I'm not sure if it's in Tom's vicinity. I mean, Tom lives in Manchester, but he only ventures out three miles down the road. So uh, I don't know whether Tom's going to make it. You know, it might be too far for him. <laughs> See, all these private jokes for the members area of Discord. Uh, Manchester. Yeah, Manchester Runfest. So do it. It's all do it. Carl and Allison, positive audio, Liverpool. Do it 100%. Manchester Runfest is on there. Right, what do you mean, might stay out? You flip it, you can get the tram home, can't you? <laughs> Genuinely, you can get the tram. Surely. From central Manchester to your gaff, you can get the tram. I'm, I'm sure you can. You're not that far out. I'm sure you, I'm not going to say where you are, but I'm sure you, I'm sure you can get the tram home. Uh, yeah there you go if anyone wants to join if this is that you just literally go to my youtube channel click the big ass green uh green big ass join button buy my stuff uh wait that's why i need to stay over <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, wait. Yeah, this Malibu Malibu Black. I know you've got the Malibu. What Wendy said something about black, but you didn't say Malibu Black. Where is that black comment? What was all that about? I'm just looking at Discord. See if I Ah, Wendy, right. Wendy's in Discord. I get it. Uh has offered the bottle, offered the bottle, offered me the bottle, or offered a taster. I just, I don't want a bottle, I just want to taste it. I'll, I'll send you, next time I send something to you, um, uh, Mark, I will send a little um, drammy, what are they called? Pouch, that's the word I'm looking for. I'll send you a pouch for some Malibu Black in return. There we go, Trav. <laughs> but it means no children at 6.30 a.m. Uh, what? Yeah, we can get a tram, but it means no children at 6.30 a.m. if we stay out. Ah, I see what you're doing. Ah, I get that. I oh, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I, I see. I get you. Hey, if you go home, you got you've got to do the whole breakfast, kids thing in the morning. If you stay out, you get you get mum or mum mum in law, gran and nanny and gran to look after the kids. I get it, Tom. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm there. Right. I've caught up with the chit chat. If no one's got any final comments, uh, final questions. Oh, yeah, Denizen. Yeah. Tom's not coming it's too far. <laughs> so, so Tom, right, so this guy here, Tom, 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 right, Tom, Tom, Tom the gardener, this guy here, he, he lives, shall we say, in a very close suburb to Manchester. He only works, he'll only do, he's a gardener, look, you can see the gardener. He only does, works within a three mile radius of, of his house, of his house. I mean, that's, that's decent work if you can get it, isn't it? <laughs> really? <laughs> so hence hence that comment 
<laughs> oh, just made a chairman's a chairman's dank. Oh, hang on, hang on. We need to investigate this before I go. We need to investigate a chairman's dank. Havana Steve, Stephen Beck, Havana Steve. Which chairman's chairman's white or uh, legacy or um, original? What? 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 I mean, that's a phenomenal DAC. It really is a phenomenal DAC. But, I mean, obviously, blind tasting is my favourite DAC. But, uh, I, I would, yeah, I, I just want to echo this from Wendy, right? I, Anna, is phenomenal. Uh, and Danielle is phenomenal. I'm going to do my best. Um to do so basically tonight and and it's, I, th I thought her it might be her laptop or computer i don't know but we had a little test and i thought it'd be fine the other day danielle's in paris as well but danielle's internet and connections is, is we've seen it on a few live streams sometimes when people have microphones on it works a, a bit better but it's a weird it's a weird kind of thing you know people it's always on upload speed some people have amazing download speeds but their upload speeds the uk has not conned on to the fact that you need a decent upload speed. Everyone, the UK, all the like Virgin, BT, and all that, they all focus on download speeds because of gamers and all that sort of stuff. They don't focus on the biggest, one of the biggest things, the biggest businesses, you know, in the moment is upload speeds. So I even my upload speed is not brilliant. It's 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 great because I pay business rates, but it's not epic. I I would love treble the upload speed of what I've got. Um, so that so that's what it is. But I would love to sort out something because Danielle is one of the, and it's a few of them. I can group them together, but he's one of the elite rum brand ambassadors. And Anna does a phenomenal job in the UK as well. Um, she's been on my radar now for quite a long, quite a long time. We've met a few times. Um, she is a big, but Angus Stewart is a big, big brand. You know, he's one of the biggest global brands out there. He's huge. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love these guys. And Danielle, I think if you met Danielle in person, it would be, I mean, it's phenomenal tonight. But if you meet him in person, he just oozes charisma, oozes fun, the big smile on his face. That's what it's all about. Uh, Zan Con, Alex Con, you know, from Worthy Park is another one. Phenomenal, you know, he lives on Worthy Park Estate. It is such a legend. Um, these guys that live and breathe Worthy, live and breathe Angostura, you know, Fads lives and breathes um, Plantation on Maison France. You know, you've got these core global Ram ambassadors that are phenomenal. And I can only do them so much justice on a live stream because in person they are amazing just to spend five minutes with let alone a few days with if you know what i mean it's just brilliant so yeah uh, right uh hang on uh, i think i think havana steve is on the white coupe i'm assuming oh uh, white um chairman's i missed it i missed it he said so so different to the Kube. I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming Havana Steve. It all I keep calling him Havana Steve. Stephen Beck. I'm assuming, I'm assuming you're talking about that. I'm assuming that's what we're talking about. Uh Tom, no, because it's it's upload speed, it, it's not. Basically, how this system works, this system goes to a central server. It doesn't come here. I upload to a server. It's like Zoom. It is effectively like Zoom. That's all it is. But it just relies on people's upload speeds. And this is a bit more in-depth than Zoom. If I started using Zoom, I wouldn't be able to do all this. I wouldn't be able to do slideshows. I wouldn't be able to do um, comments on screen and questions. The people wouldn't see the questions. That's why I don't use Zoom. This is a dedicated live software. But what this is, it's a central server and people dial into that. So it relies on people's... I can, I can have up to 10 guests. doesn't affect my upload speed at all. 
because I upload to the server. Um, so yeah, it, as I say, it's a bit. It's a. It's more. It's the, the the features and benefits are more technical in Zoom, but sometimes to bring it back to basics, like I can if I if I did the Zoom chat, I would have to just finish it there. I could not carry on and just do the comments like this. I could not interact with the comments on Zoom. There are no comments. So that's that's the trade off. You know, this becomes interactive because of the software I use. Uh, but Zoom, the the big difference as well. This is what I want to point out. Zoom. This is when everyone's upload speeds are bang on. This is HD. Um, with Zoom, it's not. So for those of you watching at home with a TV. You know, you're you're going to get blurry images or not not blurry, but not crystal clear images when everything's perfect. So that's why I use live streaming software and not Zoom. Zoom is like 720. Zoom is not 1080. It's not HD. Um, and I know because I can see the stats. I know so many people watch this back on the TV. So, yeah. <laughs> Can the things work? Okay. I'm pressed. Right, I think if you don't have what? Hang on, what's this? Oh, I didn't mean to start that. What's Steve O saying? If you don't have 10 plus up, you ain't gonna stream. Yeah, that. So basically, this is my editing. So I know I'm sorted. This is my editing PC, and I've got 50 meg on the up. You know, uh, that that's, you know, I have to have that. Some people dial in, and they've got like two or three meg. Uh, Becky, old mother hunt, literally had three meg on the upload a couple of weeks ago. She went out and bought, that's the difference. She went out and bought an Ethernet cable, so she was hardwired in. When people are doing it over Wi-Fi, even if they've got 10 meg on the upload over on Wi-Fi, it just doesn't work. So I'm all hardwired. I'm cabled, you know, Ethernet cables, the works. So, you know, I know it's never my stream. Uh -oh. But, yeah, you, you know. After show party. Right. Right, I'm going to call it quits there. Half past ten. Uh, I'm so looking forward to next week as well. I'm going to do a test with the guys next week, uh, early on in the week. I'm going to make sure they've got Ethernet cables. They should be fine because we've chatted a bit. They should be absolutely fine. Um, but next week could be fun. Really, really good fun. It's a banging rum. And you lot, you members, have got extra, extra because they've been so good. They've sent, this is, you know, they've sent all this rum. Boom, 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 boom. And then, oh, by the way, I can't, I can't wait to actually christen that. Put, put, I, I've, apparently, it's stuff to go over your Christmas pudding. <laughs> but yeah, we've got all this. This is what they've sent out, you guys. You know, we've got all that. So you guys have all got that uh, in your little pouches. We are doing. Hang on. Oh, we're doing a hooli. UK distilled from scratch. Uh, Isle of Man, they're fun guys. Go and check them out. That is next week. And I genuinely can't wait uh, for you guys to try this because it's a phenomenal white rum. Phenomenal. So, yeah, I can't wait for next week. That's, that's what's coming up in store next week. Uh, for you members, uh, this stuff will go live tomorrow as well so this is the taste along on the fourth i nearly dropped that then so the, the that so this will go live flipping now i've got these let's just put them there 970 boom hang on there we go oh, this stuff this stuff is absolutely amazing look at that this so this is madeira rum rum from madeira there we go so we've got tvt 60 percent. this is a 45 percent. absolutely glorious uh, we've got pot still, Branca, 46. Look at that, 46.6. .6. And then the sipping rum. This was my favourite sipping rum. 40% of a six-year-old. Uh, oh, look at look at the look at the awards. Look at that. Look at that. Look. Look at the amount of awards on that. 
seriously good rum. I love this. And this was their bottom of the range sipping rum. Bottom of the range. It was my favourite by a long, long way. So that is that will go on, that will go on not on sale, you know what I mean. That will be available from tomorrow in the membership area for you to sign up for, and then we'll get that shipped out. So thank you very much for watching. Half past ten. Uh, da, 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 da. Many thanks, Mark. Great show. Blah blah blah. Da, 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 da. Thank you. Cane juice. Cane juice. Honestly, oh, that is just like nectar. This is just flipping amazing. Uh, I'm going to send out some instructions for this as well, but you don't need to worry about. It, but the hooli and the hooli hurricane. I've got to stop calling it a hooligan. Hooli and the hurricane uh, next week. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you uh, next week. Toodaloo!